Shane and I just wanted to say uh, happy start to the season. They lit the tree last night. Yes. It's official. I mean, to us, to New Yorkers, that's official. Now yeah. it's Christmas. Well, they always say that it's when Santa, you know, shows up in a Thanksgiving parade, but I always think you got to light the tree. I know. You don't get the tree lit. You don't have anything. <laughs> I came to work walking right through there today, already packed. Yeah, it's nuts. Yesterday was just totally packing out as we were leaving here. We all tried to escape very yeah. quickly. I was watching tourists backing up into the street to get a good picture <laughs> of the tree, getting beeped out. It's already here. Um... And you're going to tell the story. You had uh, Juju's first class trip today. Yes. Today, uh, Juju took her first class trip, and we went to Macy's to go see Santa. Wow. That's so and, sweet. Oh, my God. First of all, it's like it's too much. Like a, a group of kids, all of them like one and two years old, mm. like so excited to be there. Uh, all the anticipation that leads up because at Macy's you have to go through Santa Land and there's all this stuff to see and they're pointing and they're all excited. Well, you uh, you know, there's a confusion thing when you're that age, no matter where you're going. You know right, I mean? you exactly. You can take them anywhere and they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> I haven't seen anything yet. She's 16 months old. Like her, now we're at the thing where I'm like, this is Santa. Here's a picture of Santa. This is Santa. Can right. you say Santa? She can say Santa. What does Santa say? She goes, ho, ho, ho. That's kind of the extent of what she knows right. about the guy. Is that he's a guy with a beard and he says, ho, ho, ho. I'm going to be honest. Steven, at my age, it's about as much as I got him. <laughs> <laughs> he's still quite the mystery. Um, but, you know, we all, we, uh, you know, her teachers are there, some other moms, and we were kind of hyping it up and, okay, we're ready to go see Santa and as soon as we round the corner you hear the first kid start to cry then yeah. the second kid start to cry and we're like hey guys this is the guy we've been talking about all day remember <laughs> <laughs> well, he, how friendly he looked in the pictures but he doesn't look like any human being that they've seen no. before yeah they'd be better off with that flyers fucking mascot yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, so w she did good with the group picture. That yeah. was fine. But then when it came time to do the individual photos, oh boy, was she not happy about that. And no, I don't she even probably think... thought you were leaving them behind with this yes. devil person. Um, so in the photo, she is, in fact, uh, kind of reaching out for her mother to please take her <laughs> yeah. away and out of this situation. Um, but, you know, it was tradition. My mom always made me take Santa photos. So, of course, I'm just like, no, go ahead and click the picture. And the woman's like, you want me to go ahead and click the picture? Click it. We're going to buy it anyway. Don't worry. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Another Christmas rude. <laughs> um, but Chris, actually... were you ever nervous to Santa? Oh, very much so, yes. Me too. Uh, we would go to the Queen Center Mall in uh, Queens. Now, by the way, this is going to interest you. He always brings up the Queen Center Mall. Uh, the New York Post did a thing through Uber, the number one drop-off place in New York City. Not just in Queens. What? Really? Yeah, the what? big mall. Is, is there a bigger mall in Queens? Am uh, I wrong? I don't, I don't think so. There's. They've actually expanded it, so it takes up. It's the Queen Center Mall. Wow. Look it up. I don't think I've even been there before. No, of course not. You live in, you know, it's a the, better yeah. borough. It's in the ass end of Queens. Yeah. So then that means Long Island people go there, too. I don't think saying. so. I think Manhattan people who want a mall. Wow. This is, is fucking Is that shocked. what it said? Yeah. Queens Center Mall, the most popular So uh, it's not yeah. the Empire State Building. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Times Square. It's wild. It's Queens Center Mall. And, and that's they, where you used to see Santa. Yeah, and the, and the Easter Bunny. But yeah, Santa, I would go there. But why wouldn't they take you to Macy's? You know how much closer I that know. is from Ron, Astoria? I have no idea. It's a fucking 15-minute train ride from my childhood home, which is my adult home. Yeah. And, and the fucking Queen Center Mall was a half-hour cab ride or like an hour train ride. It's fucking in the middle of nowhere. It yeah, sucks. Yeah, that's really strange. Why not just go to Macy's? It's got the tradition. Amy America. and John didn't have it together. I don't know. Why are you still judging them, man? They did the best they could. I guess, yeah. You yeah. try raising a, a a boy on heroin. It's not easy. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't do it. Didn't see me. Hats you know. off to them, actually. Yeah. I mean, don't do the heroin. Hey, Here, let's Chris, not take judge. A look. This is Juju's pick. Ah! 
Why would you laugh at her? I, I broke my heart, that I picture. I feel like you should have to put out a Justin Timberlake apology. <laughs> Now, uh, I know that we're not allowed to use the other F word. No, we're not. But this would have been the case. (laughs) This email, not email, what is it, like uh, Twitter? It's Instagram. He typed out a a post on Instagram. Now, so here's what happened. Justin Timberlake, or JT as he's sometimes called, Mm -hmm. I call him the fifth Beatle. Um, There was a picture of him holding his the the hand of his co-star who i don't even know who she is is her name know. darby or something what's her name chris i think uh... it's alicia Keys? alicia wainwright no what i don't is... think i know her i don't know her either she's i think a relative unknown relative of his no no so no. uh <laughs> i guess ashamed. he was holding hands with her yeah but i mean who gives a fuck yeah uh like, I feel like I could walk down the street holding hands with Michelle with one L, and yeah. you would say there's two buddies. Yeah. I mean, so here she's she's got her arm draped on his leg. The other one, she he's touching her hand. I would certainly say that it's um, familiar. You right. know what I mean? It's definitely familiar. But this is the way Jenny Hutt treats uh, men and women. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But I don't know if it warranted the level of response that he right. he uh, gave. L- let's listen to his Instagram. This is his uh, post. I stay away from gossip as much as I can. But for my family, I feel it's important to address recent rumors that are hurting the people I love. A few weeks ago, I displayed a strong lapse in judgment. But let me be clear, nothing happened between me and my co-star. I drank way too much that night and I regret my behavior. I should have known better. This is not the example I want to set for my son. I apologize to my amazing wife and family for putting them through such an embarrassing situation. And I'm focused on being the best husband and father I can be. This was not that. I'm incredibly proud to be working on Palmer, looking forward to continue making this movie and excited for people to see it. Well, first of all, all your movies stink. Get that um, through your head. I definitely didn't think that he slept with his co-star until I heard this. I mean, this is like, why is he feeling this level of guilt? How old is his son? His son isn't fucking reading National Enquirer. Right. I mean, I guess the idea is... He's four. He's four. Four. He doesn't know shit. Um, <laughs> I guess that Jennifer Beale fucking rained shit down him. Yeah. Let me tell you something else. It also sounds like in-laws. Oh, yeah. When the way he says family, I don't think he means his wife and his kid. Oh, I think he means his extended Beals. family. Right. That also, they're just like, what's going on here? I also find it interesting you put in, I should have known better. Known, known better uh, uh, from what? To, to fucking hands? have physical contact at all in any sort of way with yes. another woman? Yeah. What the yes. fuck? That's crazy. Like, I mean, he look. literally could have just said, I didn't fucking do anything. <laughs> and so uh, so when he said I should have known better, he was told by some either the family or Beale or someone, you are not to touch a woman in public. Look, Chris Stanley has cracked this case. I can't believe <laughs> how clear-headed Chris Stanley is. Yeah, 100%. He has laid it out. He is repeating what he was screamed at. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I guess I could understand if you told me, here is a picture of Justin Timberlake, and he's like holding hands with his co-star, or like she's got his hand on. And like, if you told me this really made his wife mad, I would go, I, I get it. That probably made her mad, but it doesn't to me mean that they slept together. And it certainly seems crazy to put out a formal response for something like this because it only seems guilty. Look, if he got caught. Getting blown by her. This ain't anybody's business. I know. But other than them, you you don't fucking say to America, let me fucking get down on my knees in front of you all. Look, here's the deal. Not too long ago, she was on The Tonight Show or Kim or whatever, saying that she didn't like NSYNC when she was younger, and the only one she liked was some other guy. You know what I mean? They have that fucking, uh, she's like the Michelle Obama. Yeah. Of the family. Remember how when uh, Barack Obama first became president, Michelle Obama would like to do these little put down jokes. Mm, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he better wash the dishes and he has stinky feet and all that. You know what I mean? Michelle is smoking too, I think. Yeah, like put the fucking cigarette away. That's cheating. It's like kissing <laughs> another woman. So that's their thing. But 
you know, my judgment isn't on her. Why is he fucking allowing himself to be treated this way? Right. He needs a fucking Dante Nero. At man school. Man school 202. 202 that's right. <laughs> I guess somebody else had 101. <laughs> <laughs> or else he's not going to work with rookies. But it's ridiculous. This is a ridiculous situation. Yeah. I also find it interesting another line in this right before that. I drank. He had he had to say in the post, I drank way too much that night, and I regret my behavior. Yeah, it's probably one fucking beer. <laughs> and so I'm saying, like, unless this is what I'm thinking now that you hear that, maybe this whole thing is getting out ahead of it because he's like, I know we made out that night. Picks are gonna come out. Let me get ahead of this now before they're gonna put more things out. Maybe that has something. Even to then, it's none of our fucking business. He had to fucking, you know, I mean, run his own fucking shop. <laughs> the, yeah. the length of this fucking apology. It's really intense. Is shocking. It's a paragraph, a little more of him just like, yeah, I was told that this was a bad thing I did. Also, I think I have a drinking problem. Hey, Tommy in Brooklyn. Yeah, you know, uh, as soon as that picture was shown, there was a reporter at the airport asking his wife if everything's okay with the marriage. What kind of horseshit is that where you got to go to the guy's wife? First of all, nobody likes a rat. Second of all, well, who does that? Of course this guy's going to apologize. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Well, I mean, yes, that's the problem with being a fucking celebrity, even though... I mean, it's not like he makes albums anymore. No. This is the first movie in a long time. He seems like to be the laziest star you've ever heard of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think he's released, the last thing he did was he released a single. Uh, tell Vito to come over here. I'll... I got to get to the bottom of something with what's going on with our team. Is he, uh, is he coming in? Yeah. All right. It's the uh, Bennington show. Oh, there's uh, video too. Now. Vito, what's going on in Washington today? D.C. Mm-hmm. You've not heard of the impeachment, right? No. Maybe it's because you don't put any of them, the TVs on. The TVs um, broke earlier today, and they were trying to fix them before the show, but they have to come back later to fix them. This is impeachment day. I know mm-hmm. it's impeachment day. You know, but you don't tell your staff. <laughs> he's sitting there, and when I said, what's going on in Washington, he said, D.C. <laughs> As if that was an answer. <laughs> You're like, Washington State or D.C.? And by the way, he does just look like he's wrecked. I mean, I have yeah. the feeling just <laughs> The way he's like... tracking, like, people's hands. Yeah. You know a drunk person will do that? Like, if you yeah. move your hand, he's like, what's that? Like, <laughs> but I bet he had two beers. You know what I mean? He's <laughs> yeah. not a fucking drinker. Yeah. Well, he, yeah, he does look like he's in trouble. <laughs> Um, what well, what is the whole fucking point of making it to a star if this is the way you still have to act like you're fucking living in some suburban town where everybody <laughs> gives a shit what everybody's doing? You think Frank Sinatra was going to worry about that? No. <laughs> How about the king? How about Elvis? No. Look at uh, he is really in a rough situation. I don't know who this other woman is. This isn't the other woman in question, but she is really like she's tried to shake him off a couple times. Oh, Timberlake! All right, Timberlake. The fucking apology was so ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I'm watching this uh, in full. This doesn't seem like uh, he can't even get a hard true. dick. He's so fucking drunk. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about him for that exact reason. What's he gonna do? Rub his lip dick all over some fucking unknown? Did anybody find out who this woman is? What she's done? How do, how could there be somebody starring in a movie we never even heard of before? You mean Palmer? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good point. We never heard of Palmer either. Right. I'm telling you, he's clear head today. Wow, her Wikipedia is just Alicia Wainwright is an American actress and nothing else. Well, there's just, more. Well, then there. she has an early life and a career. And... Oh, shit. Oh, come on. But if it, she was known, it'd be in the fucking top. You know what? You're getting cloudy. <laughs> Vito yeah. came in here and he's clouding up your perfect day. All right, so she's been in five movies, none I've heard before. So if you want to bring something up, it would be that none of the movies have really Wikipedia links. Well, that's why there's nothing up top. Jeez, you guys. Hey, I'm being I mean, we're in the Christmas like, season now. Okay? I, I'm trying. This oh. isn't the season for treason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's been in a couple of TV shows. She was on General Hospital. All right. Um, so this is a big thing for her. You were talking about Juju. Yeah. And crying. Um, Fez just wrote to us. He plays Santa for 100 kids tomorrow. 
One year old and under, they just stare and drool. 18 months to two years old, they scream and cry. Three to four year olds can't quit laughing. Oh, that, was, that yeah. one's a good one. I've yeah. been looking forward to that one. Gay Santa? That doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm a little too red state when it comes Mr. to this. Mr. and Mr. Claus. I think the children have a right to know who's <laughs> laughing at The children have a right. This Santa is gay. Oh, God, man. I'd go down there right now with a big fucking billboard walking back and forth. Probably turn him into a rock star, you know? I know. I'd be like, bro, don't fucking do it, bro. <laughs> Um, all right, Lewis, our buddy in uh, Manhattan, wants to give us a little. He's he's the gossip king. He knows what everything is. Hey, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, I got I got the I got the gossip of the day. Um, me personally, I don't care because I, I canceled him and his wife a long time ago. But um, <laughs> why'd you I cancel think, him? Um, him with the print stuff and the sexy back, and he's been saying some crazy shit online with the Me Too stuff. And his wife, she's just as lazy as he is, and she hasn't done anything so. I so really he's pro you, uh, me too, or is he anti? No, he said he said some crap like um, on Twitter. He said, uh, um, "My my wife is hot." Hashtag me too. That's what he. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! <laughs> I'm gonna rape yeah, my wife. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why people are upset is because um, he doesn't have his wedding ring on in the picture. Yeah, but he's I'm also in a movie. <laughs> but no, that's but the after that party, like, yeah. The yeah, but what do you got to do? Take it off and put it on? Take it off and put it on? Yeah. That's yes, fucking I insane. <laughs> I got to, when um I did the movie with Dennis Dugan, I got to keep mine because I'm supposed to be married in it. And then she looked at it. She's like, I like your ring. Can we use yours? And I was like, yes. I was very happy. Oh. <laughs> it works. I love these behind the scenes they, they things. They're very exciting. They can CG it up. He could keep it on. And you know what the other thing about him is he never gets back together with the other guys when they do stuff. No. Yeah. yeah. He's done with yeah. them. It's kind of shitty. Yeah, they all suck. Uh. <laughs> and somebody was saying that this apology came out on Britney's birthday. So <laughs> they were saying. That's a gift to her. It, yeah, it was karma. <laughs> Although she won't know about any of this. And if they bring it up, she'll go, who's Justin? <laughs> <laughs> She's just as drunk. Yeah. <laughs> good eye, though, Lewis. Thanks. Right. Good. Good one. Lewis knows it all. Um, John in Virginia is asking uh, Chris for a favor. John. Hey, John. Hey, guys. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. How are you? Yeah, well. Good. I'm okay now, but starting at 6, I'll be shit in life. What's going on? But I'm having my colonoscopy tomorrow, and I I need Chris to say a prayer for me to... If you can say the whole Mary, he's done it before. Just say a little year. prayer for oh, me. <laughs> together, <laughs> together. All right, John. We're going to have him say heart. a prayer for you. All right. Oh. Um, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord's with you. <laughs> Hollows the name. <laughs> Isn't. The... Whose name is Hollow? <laughs> How, hollows, hollowed. Is the name. <laughs> you keep saying it's the name. The kingdoms come. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> you realize that you're taking Christ out of Christmas I, because I, you can't. This is. I'm learn pretty sure this prayer. is blasphemy, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. Is... To me, it is. The kingdoms come. <laughs> so... It is what it is in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> You know it is what it is in heaven. Hey, it is what it is. <laughs> That's what in it heaven. is in heaven. Bro, it is what it is, okay? It is what it is in heaven. <laughs> I, I like now you seem disappointed. Like, oh, I, I forgot the next part. You've got nothing right yet. Come on. Uh, it is what it is in heaven as it is on earth. So it's the same in heaven as it is? I mean, this guy's ass is going to bleed out. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. Um, I know I, if, if you said it, I'd remember it. Well, uh, That's not how, how it memory ends. works. <laughs> Help. Take it from the beginning and say it fast. Don't okay. get stuttering. Just go. Uh, okay. okay. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord's with you, hallows the name. It is as it is in heaven, within the earth. 
You had it. <laughs> Just let him go through. <laughs> Come on, man. From the top, go. Uh, uh, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with you. Uh, hallowed is the name. It is what it is in heaven as it is on earth. Amen. Hmm? What? Is there, am I missing a line? You're missing, <laughs> <laughs> You're missing seven lines. Oh, damn. Hail Mary. No, just stop it. Just stop I blasphemy. I, we just wouldn't. You're the worst Catholic ever. I'm a really bad Catholic. Oh, I forgot. We said we were going to review <coughs> the Irishman today. Yes. I. Uh, everybody had watched it over the weekend, but I did watch it throughout the week. I've only watched it once. Everybody else? Once. Once. Earl? Once. Wow. Yeah. Once. All right. So uh, what time do you want to do that so we can let the people tap who haven't seen it yet? Um, Let's say in five. Four, Four, three, three you know. two. Should we do one. it uh, like let's say quarter after three? Okay. okay. Wait, quarter after. Yeah, quarter after three is perfect. Okay. That's three fifteen, Earl. Lock it in. Put it on your smartwatch. It's the new lockdown. Oh. Earl's doing the big GPS on uh, Sunday. Uh, Saturday is yeah. put together for us. Saturday, 3 p.m. on Deep Tracks Channel 27. We are going to the Midwest, and we're going to hear music by Bob Seeger. John Mellencamp, Kansas, Sticks. It's going to be a great hour, 3 p.m. East. Who's all. your favorite out of all those bands? Uh, you know, uh, Sticks is Wiki's favorite band of all time. He loves Yeah, them. he absolutely. You know why? Why? I'm sailing away. They actually have a lot of hits, believe it or not. They do. Yeah. And I hope that this kicks off our Sticks and Stones weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Earl's gonna be a blue color man. I don't even know what song Earl would pick out. Sticks. I can't tell with Earl ever. I you know. know. He tends to be what's the biggest hit, though. He is you know? a hit machine. If I had a nickname for him, it'd be Top Fody. <laughs> <laughs> loudy, loudy, here comes Top Fody. Kansas was it? You know, uh, I mean, you're talking. These were all the big arena bands, mm -hmm. the, the big Midwestern bands. But then, of course, there were English bands that fit into that. And even I think Boston, out of Boston, fit into that right. whole <laughs> that big Midwestern sound. thing. Yeah. yeah. I think my favorite group that we feature though is Cheap Trick. Mm, we love Cheap Trick. Is Ario Speedwagon on the list? Yes, they are. Oh. Hmm. Earls, no surprises in this. <laughs> Normally, there's always some surprises. Surprise or two. The way you make that sound sounds like you're going to jump me. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. This is a crazy one. Apple TV uh, paid $25 million for a. a Billy, is it Eilish? Eilish, yeah. Yeah. Uh, documentary. Now, this kid's only been into puberty for like three years. Yeah. I'm pretty sure she's like 17 years old. She's and one fucking record. How could yeah. there even be a documentary yet? It's just a fucking grab by Apple to get young people to sign up to Apple Plus. That's it's all it is. So weird. But, but what that's a lot of money. I know. Yeah. I mean, also, what is the subject matter of said documentary? God knows. I don't know how her brother dates a girl who looks like her. I is don't that know. right? Yeah. Oh, it's let me see. Weird. I love, yeah, yeah, I love is, to this see is this. Good. this is now, was dick. he dating her for a while or did he just meet somebody? I think And doesn't just... everybody that's 17 look like her now? No, but this girl really looks like Billie Eilish. The girlfriend's on the left. Oh, Billie wow. Eilish she does look like her. On the right. I would have thought it was her. I'd rather watch a documentary about the girlfriend, if I'm <laughs> totally honest. And Look what a creep he looks like. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like Drop Dead Fred there. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like he could be the brother in the fighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she looks exactly like his Is sister. he running her career or something? Uh, he's co-writer and producer of all of her oh, Yeah, and okay. I think her parents are involved, So too. she's fucking like... propped up. Oh, yeah, Ron. Yeah, and then even... I can't remember. I can't remember. Which you one. nailed it yeah. because this whole fucking thing is a gimmick. All right, why do you hate Billie Eilish so you much? You loved her a few months ago. I just realized that once he started dating the sister, and I found out that the brother fucking. What do you care? I why just... did you like Billie in the first place? Was it for music? I like that one song, uh, "Bad Guy." It was pretty good. It's Let a good song. It's a it. really good song. Because I honestly know nothing about it. 
It's Bobby quite Kelly sexual. acted like he fucking knew something by pushing her name past me. It's quite sexual. It's in the criminal by Miss Fiona <laughs> Apple, who pulled this whole thing off 20 years ago. <laughs> Earl, I'm sorry you had to hear that. You're no fan. Yeah, because the whole out al- the whole album stays at a certain level. This there's no tempo monotone, changes. very monotone and um, visual uh, audio effects. I know that was really what happened. Is I watched this video and I was like, I don't know if I like the song so much as like the video is really cool. And then that's all of her songs have like these really intense music videos that you're kind of like, oh, that's some weird imagery. And then, but then when she was on SNL, you're like, well, you can see that there's not yeah. a lot there's of no performers. There's no there, there, yeah. yeah. Nothing there. Yeah. Uh, call me back when she's dating Leo DiCaprio, okay? <laughs> then I'll know she's made it. Now, his uh, girlfriend told everybody, shut up, mind your own business. 23-year uh, age gap is, uh, and she goes, people should be able to date who they want to date. Yes. Well, I mean, you know, once you hit a certain age, yes, 100%. Yeah, I mean, I don't, that's also one of those things where, like, the age gap thing is always, like, you talk about it for the day, and then everyone's over it pretty damn quick. You told that to Frank Sinatra, Mia Farrow. Frank had to have Shecky Green beat up over it. <laughs> yeah, it, it always goes back, because it's really making fun of the man. Not the girl. Right, you know exactly. I mean? They're acting like he's got some kind of a fucking weird fear of aging. Yeah, they were kind of hard on Leo this year. I think Vice did some, like, semi. They just, they just did a lot of research into every girlfriend over the last 20 years, and they made, like, a fucking chart. He's had chart. a couple of uh, attractive girlfriends yes. over the yeah. years. And they made a that... couple of months for 20-some <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah. He, like, dates the most beautiful woman in the world every six weeks. When I was a kid, he was, like, one of my first big, you know, heartthrob crushes. You were obsessed. obsessed over him. I had posters in my bedroom. And and so, like, you know, that stuff always lasts for a lot. It's like a short period of time in your life, but then you're, like, very obsessive. And I remember that, like, the tabloids started coming out, and I'm like... I'm seeing a pattern with him. There's a type. Yeah. I'm not sure if I fit into this type. And that's when I realized I was grown up. When I realized, like, hmm, that he might not like me if he met me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I would uh, get a date with him. Did yeah. you know about the pussy posse? I wasn't aware of the oh. pussy posse. Um, I don't think anybody knew about the pussy posse that wasn't an adult, though. Okay, you know I mean, yeah. I don't think the fucking... Teen magazines were pushing right. pussy posse. They're anybody. like, Leo's out with his pussy posse again. <laughs> I bet that posse is going to round up some pussy this week. <laughs> and also, like, that's kind of like not the message the teen girl mags want you to think. They want you to think, like, he could be your boyfriend. Right. Take a quiz and see if you like all the same stuff as him. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, they want you to think. He's going to take you to prom one day. I think what's always cute about that, too, is you'll have, like, a movie star like him, but he's just, like, next to fucking JT from uh, the fucking Home Improvement show. <laughs> know. You know what I mean? It's true. <laughs> they don't make any kind of difference yeah, at all. Where they're like, you know, like, here's a guy, and he's like, he looks like a man, and he's, like, all oiled up. Right. And then there's Ryder Strong. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you like? <laughs> uh, when Earl was younger, it was only one guy. Bobby Kennedy. <laughs> well, he was adorable. Yeah, and had 11 babies. Um, so are these all the girls that Leo... These are all this Leo's is all former the, model girlfriends. The pussy, the this posse. Is, the possets. <laughs> He's had a pretty good sexual life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't understand why a guy's not normal. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, I mean... This is too much for anyone. It's just one Victoria's Secret model after another. I didn't so. know he was with Miss Blake Lively. And, yeah, I know that either. He was apparently also linked to Rihanna as well. Now, if you think, like, if you're Ryan Reynolds, like, you'll be sitting there with your wife, the two kids are there, fucking all of a sudden there's some Leo movie on, and he's just, like, fucking staring at her. You like you this like, movie? You like being part of that fucking parade of fucking pussy? <laughs> oh, yeah, Barr, he was with for a, a long time. Yeah. The, he kind of invented sports, her. Yeah. yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? He kind of broke her out. Six years, that's a long time. Giselle Bunchen. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Five years? 
Long time. Yeah, but I'm sure he was doing other shit in between. Yeah, he's still with the posse, of course. Why? What is your speed with all this? <laughs> Somebody's uh, just extra pictures of the same girl. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Yes. Yeah. You know, let's enjoy. Those are all their children together. <laughs> Aw. They're so cute. Little fucking rainforest kids. Paris, that seems off brand. I don't think he did it. <laughs> sure, he just slept with her. She just said it. He just spent a weekend in Paris. <laughs> you guys, I um, I fucked Leo. <laughs> Who's the That's it hot. boy now, Earl? Do you know? I couldn't even tell you. If I, I I could because we walked by the those poor kids in the fucking snow and they were sleeping out to see Harry Styles. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean he is a dreamboat. I'm yeah. gonna say it. I mean, he. It makes a lot of sense. He's like a classic teen heartthrob face. He's got great hair. He's got the feminine, masculine mixture. The weird Accent. thing about him is even the older ladies like him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he. Mm-hmm. Um, wow! Look at his list yeah. Yeah. already at his young age. He was with T Swift. Now. Um, I think she's pretty much been with everybody right. too. She's like the fucking girl version of Leo. And right. then he writes bad. <laughs> she writes bad stories about how their nuts smell. <laughs> um, she's in the penis posse. <laughs> <laughs> she's hey a guys. fucking mean girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? No yeah. matter. To, she's mean to girls and guys. She's terrible. Yeah. She's mean to Kanye. <laughs> yeah, she, she, bullied, she bullied Kanye. But she turned that thing. You know what I mean? Right. She like she victim played it pretty well. She did. I mean, who gives a fuck? A useless fucking. All you have is awards. Don't it's act like that. that was a big moment for you. The one time I, he interrupted me. Uh, so Harry Styles, uh, he was on SNL and he was doing a joke about his old band One D. Mm-hmm. And he refer he was saying stuff about his old gang and he referred to one of the kids as Ringo. And then everybody got upset because they're like, you're acting like fucking this guy stinks. And then there was another backlash of who said Ringo stinks. <laughs> now, my entire life, Ringo has been the joke of the Always, Beatles, yeah. right? You're the Ringo of our group, blah, blah, blah. The only people that I've never heard do Ringo jokes were drummers. Drummers really fucking dig Ringo. Yeah. I've heard I, D- Dave Grohl say amazing things right. about Ringo. I think Mick Fleetwood did. Earl, you are a drummer, right? I was in junior high school. Does Ringo stink or is he good? Because I don't have the ear to know. Even like when I'm listening to a band I like, I can't tell if the drummer is one of the greats. Right. Ringo is... If you ask any musician, they'll say Ringo was like the key piece of the Beatles. He was a key, like the key piece, not, not John Lennon, not, not Paul McCartney, not, well, and Ringo. A, a key piece, like it's because remember four. he There's was only four fucking <laughs> yeah. people. Is George not a key? Twenty-five <laughs> percent of anything's a key. <laughs> yes, but he also replaced Pete Best, who was the most popular Beatle at that particular time. You to... know that that's not true. That's becoming <laughs> mythology. But again, no one's going to be more popular than fucking Paul McCartney. All right, try to go back to this. Is Ringo a good drummer or not? He's a very good drummer. Because I will tell you this. If you look at his career, so he's with the Beatles. That's fucking unbelievable. Then he gets to do movies. He also has his own hits, you know. Mm -hmm. Then that Ringo band that he takes the best fucking people out and they're different year after year after year. That looks like one of the funnest things to do in history. I've never heard people make comments about, like, the average person make comments about, oh, well, I thought that band was good, but the drumming was subpar or, like, the bassist wasn't that good. I think really the reason they honed in on Ringo was he wasn't as cute as the other ones, and that really became the thing. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't fit the mold because... He wasn't a pinup boy. Right, exactly. All right, that's interesting. But... I know for a fact people have made, but also Ringo, because it was a mid 60s thing, not a late 60s, he had a very small kit, correct, Earl? Yeah, he had like, a, I think it was a pearl kit. And, and again, especially live, they had no monitors, so he has to keep the beat. And he has to, he has I to. I mean, keep... first of all, the Beatles are barely a live band. Barely. There's no fucking decent archives of them performing what we would consider a rock show right you know they've done a screaming 
fucking stay Shea Stadium show, but nobody was like, oh, that was the that was the Beatles. Hey, John in Austin. What's good? How's it going? All right. So when the Beatles came over uh, to New York City and they played at Sullivan in 1964, you know, and that set a huge record for viewership. A lot of kids saw Ringo and they saw that he was playing with matched grip instead of traditional grip, you know, where you flip the stick around in your left hand. Mm Mm-hmm. And people saw that, and they saw the w- weird way he hits the hi-hat, and they said, you know what, that's what I want to do. And they went out and bought a Ludwig kit, not a pro kit, but a Ludwig. And they say, I want to play like that. And a whole bunch of people started playing matched grip and wanted to be rock stars. And people, uh, people don't really realize that Ringo did have some really good chops, you know. If you look at the fills on I Want to Hold Your Hand and or the ride cymbal gig that he does on I Feel Fine, he's much more talented than people give him credit for. Well, he certainly doesn't get the credit for it. There's no doubt uh, about that. Uh, Rich in Toronto. Uh, yeah, you got to hear what Quincy Jones was saying about Ringo. He said that he was just a terrible drummer at one time that they were at one of the studios and they couldn't get Ringo to play a certain riff. So he sent Ringo out for lunch or something or other, and he had to bring in a regular studio drummer to take over to do it properly. Well, you do have to remember that Quincy came from the jazz era. You know what I mean? Where there was fucking geniuses playing right. every single instrument. But that is a very good point because there was a thing where Paul sent Ringo home and then he played drums because uh, he thought Ringo couldn't get to it on some fucking oh, song. Really? Yeah, and then Ringo would quit for like a day or two. It didn't make the news. Once he found out, yeah. yeah, yeah I think he found out when he came back with the sandwiches. <laughs> they are like, we're done with that song, Ringo. <laughs> so that also could have uh, led to it. You got the kit wrong, did you, Earl? Yeah, I, I should have known Ludwig. Earl, man, when I, when I count on you, you know what I'm saying? I count on you then. I don't think I should have come up with any, all kinds of stuff. But when it's the world of music, you're my Quincy Jones. Thank you. Yeah. Well, now you're acting like Terry Jones from Monty Python. <laughs> no, I mean, you didn't ask him who all the girls were in the Pussy Posse. None of that. I never go to you unless I think you got the answer. If I think no one's got the answer, I go to Chris looking for some <laughs> dumb, crazy response. What do you need, Rod? <laughs> Lord <Perfect>. Fair. <laughs> Oh, don't even get him started on that. I'm very uncomfortable by the way he treats prayers. Yeah. Why do you? Why did you never take the time to learn them? But you call yourself a Catholic. I'm a bad Catholic. I was raised Catholic. I just never. But you, how you could were you be? not raised you Catholic. Were not. I went. They sent my parents sent me to Catholic school, like Catholic catechism <laughs> this school. Would, no, then you person, would know the Lord's prayer. Can I know. I tell you this. Every person I know, whether they stuck with you know Catholicism or they I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> he went like this. <laughs> like, he's like like he's like my little brother. Uh they it was like drilled into your head. It's like the yeah. only thing you remember. hundred percent. I skipped it a lot, all right, because I used to throw tantrums saying I'm not going to Catholic school. <laughs> tantrums. I I remember I remember holding on to the couch leg as my parents were like, or my dad was like, "You're going to fucking St. Pat's." It was St. Patrick's in the Queens, and it fucking it was a f- whole thing. I remember crying and flipping Saint the Patrick's fuck out. Queens, it was St. Patrick's in Queens. I, I the Hail Mary was drilled in my head so much that I remember it in cool. Spanish, not just English. <laughs> he just gave him the face. Why do you get mad when other people say they know Hail Mary? Look, I know I should have known it by now. All right. <laughs> well, Doesn't seem that way. I, I, Do you know the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag of the United States of America. <laughs> this is the co- I no, this I don't. Is right. the country. <laughs> <laughs> Which we love. Which we love. <laughs> so you don't even know that. You just don't water, fucking remember well. things. <laughs> well, I remember the day I, I I gave up on learning the Hail Mary or the other ones. <laughs> the ro- rosary is another one. That's the not a- rosary is another one. The rosary is just the Hail Marys and our father put together. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought it was a whole new thing. All right. So it was when I had to give my first confession. <laughs> And I gave it, and they said, uh, do a couple of Hail Marys, a couple of Rosemary's. A uh, <laughs> couple of Rosemary's? Rosemary's. <laughs> Rosemary's. And then I, was, I, I thought, never told a little kid to do said, Rosemary's. He said Hair Marys and Rosemary's. 
<laughs> and then I thought to myself, am I going to tell this priest I don't know what, how to say these things? I don't remember them. Or am I just going to walk out of this church? And I just walked out of the church. Yeah, everyone did that. All right, okay. Then we went to what we called Our Lady of Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Use some of that money we were given. Give yourself a nice fucking tasty treat. Mm, that does sound good. One time I got caught when I was supposed to be in church hanging out in the laundromat because it was warm in the winter. <laughs> I used to meet this little girl down there. And we were just hanging around in the laundromat, kissing and stuff. <laughs> Somebody went home and fucking rat it. Who would do that? Scumbag. Thank you. <laughs> what somebody else's kid's doing with his fucking love of his life up to that point, you know? It's none of your fucking business. She stuck that tongue in my uh, mouth. I almost passed out. I was so excited. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the first time somebody put their tongue in your mouth? How oh, yeah. fucking you're just like, oh, my God. It's like they put some, like their tongue up your asshole. It was so exciting. <laughs> Earl, you're still waiting for that moment, huh? <laughs> Never been kissed? I'm Maybe Dante worried. ought to get your ass out to just fucking make out with a hooker. It's not a bad idea. Is that what you want? I'll make out with you. Did you call Dante back after he tried to school you? I have not called him back yet. How did you feel being a fucking... Uh, you're old enough to get fucking AARP now. <laughs> you know what I mean? You basically... <laughs> are there yet. Huh? Yes, there you yet. are, dude. Take a look. You are of age. You, the magazine will be coming to you. Now, here's the deal. And you have another man telling you how to meet girls and what to say to girls, and then you're like, oh... Okay, so I act a little coy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you just need to hear a different voice. From a man. Yeah. That's what he was giving you man lessons. And like I said, technically you could go into an old folks home now. They can't keep you out. Which I wouldn't mind putting them in one. That would, I think just because I worry about his hips. Yeah. It's for the best. to watch out for him and, you know, come up with activities for him to do right. during the day that he would like. He can play question. Canasta. <laughs> Ooh. He find, keeps bringing up to everybody what time Jeopardy comes on. It's seven. But that know. didn't drive you crazy yesterday? It, it irritated me a bit, but then there was some I advice. winced every time. I, I just, I don't know why Earl... Why would you have to have someone to tell you that you need to, one, take care of yourself or love yourself, or two, be confident? You know that about life. Let me tell you something. Earl does love himself. He's fucking idolizes himself. Narcissist? Yeah. I mean, he answered pretty easily that he'd be psyched to have himself as a friend. (laughs) Please, I'd like you oh. to go through it for one fucking week, girl. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be jumping off the fucking bridge and no Italian could talk you out of it. Bro, you could change anything in your life. You don't have to be friends with Earl. Bro, jump, bro. Be confident, bro. <laughs> uh, oh. I just right, know. Papa George just said this. When the Beatles met Elvis in 65, Colonel Parker, who was an illegal immigrant himself, was working to getting them <laughs> deported back to England. What kind of a weird little fucking thing is this to send us? This is very strange. The Colonel was uh, an immigrant? Yeah, that's why the Elvis never toured Europe, is that. Uh, the colonel w- never let Elvis go anywhere by himself, and he was afraid that he wouldn't be able to get back in the country. Where was he from? Oh, like a fucking Czechoslovakia, Hungary really? type bullshit that. thing. Yeah, I mean, I think he came over when he was, was from, a little kid. He was from the Netherlands. Same fucking thing. Gotcha. He came over when he was a little kid, right? I believe. Because he had that whole big hair. Yeah. And now here's the thing: he could use the white bathroom and fucking Earl's. Grandparents couldn't. Yeah. That's what annoys me about that. Someone from I'd keep the, the fucking Netherlands out first. <laughs> what was, are they? The Dutch from the they're Netherlands? They're Dutch, Ron. Filthy people. And he came over when he was eighteen. Oh shit! And he's faking that accent. Yeah. Yeah, he's got to be. Because he should be fucking talking like he's with Death Leopard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I saw the fucking tour poster for that Motley Crue Death Leopard thing. Motley Crue is huge. Def Leppard is fucking down there, poison-sized. And one extract they threw in it. Ready? 
Joan Jett and the Blackhearts. Whoa, wow. really? Yep. Big summer tour. Yeah, that's huge. At the Earl. bottom of the bill, too? I mean, she should be... Where is she? She should be above Motley Crue. She had fucking, she what, two hits? <laughs> what would you want to do? Drive everybody out into the parking lot? <laughs> Those fucking hair kids never liked a girl. No. No. Don't you think people from the Netherlands should have been called Neanderthals? Oh, up there, they're <laughs> on the same side. <laughs> no. That's really cute, though. That's really adorable. And this is why the, you had to get a GED. This one is different. <laughs> I was on a Motley oh. Cruise website. They just had themselves up big. <laughs> this one, it looks like they're co-headlining. Yeah. I think they should do what Billy Joel and Elton did and play each other's songs. <laughs> I don't know why Billy Joel and Elton thought like that was a nice thing. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want to see Billy Joel doing fucking <laughs> Tiny Dancer. <laughs> Elton John, you had to be a big shot, didn't you? <laughs> I hate uh, when he does that accent in the song. Billy Joel said that Elton John kept the big bowl of marshmallows on his piano and was just eating the whole time. Marshmallows? Yeah. And then um, Elton John said that Billy Joel was so fucked up on cough medicine that he would fall asleep at the piano. <laughs> Be by the clock on the butter bill. You going to the big Motley Crue uh, thing? I, I'm going to pass on this tour. Uh, I'm going to do Skankfest in in Houston, and I think the night before, in one in a town that's driving distance, is Rage Against the Machine. Oh, Florentine already got his tickets. That's so cool. So it seemed weird to see Rage as a nostalgic act, though. You know what I mean? Like, you're not. Yeah. To me, they're the weirdest fucking people that they broke up just when they would have been at their resistance top, you know, with the Bush years and the war. And it never occurred to them to get together. And I go, why didn't they get back together? They were like, he felt like, Zach felt like he had plenty of money. I go, oh, that's what that was about then. <laughs> Right. We weren't wow. really raging against the machine. We were trying to put up a pile of money. Get comfortable. That's that's weird. I never heard. Uh... Get comfortable is the name of the first album. <laughs> <laughs> Rage and then get so cozy. Living in comfort. <laughs> this is a new song I got because I got a brand new pool. <laughs> brand new... <laughs> so it's all bullshit, huh, Earl? The whole rage thing. Uh, I, I, I like the fact, I, like the Rage, fact right? I adore that band, and I'm I'm happy. I've never seen them live, so I'm looking forward to the chance to see them live go if they Rock? come to New York ever. Oh, I thought he was gonna go with you in Florentine. Um, now if you uh, take a look up at our Instagram stories, you'll see a celebrity wearing the Bennington shirt, and I can tell you this: this person is very, very. Jealous of the Bennington shirt. There it is, Mr. Looks Robert Kelly. Great on him. It looks very it's a good. Great now, shirt. by the way, I said one day that he wore oversized glasses, and he screamed at me that they're not oversized. I thought they were intentionally oversized, I like stylistically. I thought they were too. I also think that he never wore those glasses till he was on that rock and roll TV show, and right? They, and then, they... then his character wore them, and everybody liked them. Because they look good on him, but yeah, I mean, I feel like the I thought you know it was a style choice yeah. that they were oversized. Yeah. I mean, if you're seeing that much lower beneath the eye, then I'll we're put in that, trouble. Yeah, I think we'll put that in oversized category. Thank you. It's a good look. Thank you. So was that Bennington shirt on him? Oh, it was yeah. fantastic. I'm gonna get one too. A lot of people were saying that you look thinner in your other shirt than you did the Bennington shirt. <laughs> I was so let down with that commercial because the other one was so fucking epic. I know. I know. But the people who didn't see it loved your secondary right. commercial. Well, that feels yeah. good. But it's still the initial. Like the initial thing was just so fuck. I was. I'm, it was unbelievable. It was I the was... best thing that you've ever done in your <laughs> career. No, yeah, I'm serious. It was like I was cute. really like jaw dropped. And I'm I was... like, this isn't a piece of shit like that creep song. What? He's done something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just the other day I was laughing so much and I was thinking about your heart. I'm in the shower and I'm fucking laughing because when he did the sound check 
That Creeps with Kids song sounded so fucking bad. Yeah. And he just kept, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he was, he was fucking, he knew it wasn't going well. Right. Oh, yeah. The bass sounded like it was terrible and he couldn't hear himself in the whole thing. No, no, no. But I was in the back fucking, like, literally going, this is, this is what people are afraid of in life. Like, looking stupid in front of people, right? <laughs> But his heart was like, I'm just doing it. And he tried it a couple of times, and it stunk every fucking time. And then I went walking up there, and he goes, and he just looks at me, and he's serious as hell, and he goes, I'll kill it during the show. I felt horrible. It was so fucking cute. But the fact that you said that to me. No. Do you remember what I said back? No. Nothing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, I, it was going so bad, I couldn't even bust his balls. You know what I mean? Like if you saw your friend on a first date and he sh was shitting himself and puking at the same time, that's how I felt. You can't turn to that person and go, hey, it's not so bad. No, you couldn't say anything. You couldn't say, hey. That was a proper you... response, Rod. Yeah, I just had nothing. There was no place that I felt like I could comfortably go. And then you came out doing the show and you honestly did. You did it very, very well with yeah. it. Yeah. Thank you. But I wish we would have recorded how fucking bad it was going. <laughs> Because he was just in his street clothes. <laughs> and there was just like sound guys hanging yeah. around. I saw them just staring at him. Like, John, Johnny was right next to me, actually. Yeah. That's how I was fucking doing well, it. And Naughty by Nature was getting ready for their sound check. So I was just thinking, I wonder what's on their mind right now. That like, this guy's just. Like, is this a gong show that we're about to come out? <laughs> yeah, their manager was on stage as well with me, Big Tommaso. T. <laughs> T. Now, last year when you modeled the shirt, same size, yes. it was tight on you. This year, you're thinner. Do you think? I know so. Interesting. That feels How's it feel? Good. I guess looser. I feel like you're trying to lose weight. I'm not. I haven't seen him eat anything terrible in a while. He uh, said this to me, because um, we're going out tonight with Jim. Mm -hmm. Jim's taking the, the whole team out for uh, to a big, famous steakhouse in New York. And um, Chris takes me aside and he goes like this. Do they have steamed chicken? <laughs> I go, I don't know if anyone has steamed chicken. <laughs> Chris, he's on a weight loss program. Yeah, he is. I was just curious about their chicken selection there, Ron. And can steamed I get a, Can I get hot water and lemon? Thank you. <laughs> it's just so Earl, good. Are you going tonight? Yes, I am. <laughs> what fucking weird thing are you going to order? I am I haven't eaten yet. I'm, I'm ready to eat. I'm going to eat. Porter House for two? By the way, <laughs> most people, if you're going out to dinner, like you don't have to save up. Like yeah. You can eat breakfast and lunch. Like, I've never seen Earl eat a steak in my life. Yeah, I was I was never a meat eater anyway, but I will order a steak tonight. Sliders or meat? <laughs> Do you want to see if they have sliders? I never had a steak. I'll meat. be more specific. I'll, spe I'll be more specific. You've never you had a steak, did you just say? I said I'm not. When He's I a vegan who eats sliders. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a vegan, Earl. <laughs> say Could you guys meat. please let Earl enjoy his dinner yeah, tonight? Please. I, I, He's what eat kind his of steak are you going to order? Not sure yet. I want to see what's the selection. The mushroom steak. The same selection has been there since the beginning of time. <laughs> There's, like four There's cuts. no new cuts to yeah. steaks. <laughs> We're working on a new cut. <laughs> Disrupt the steak industry. It's hoof. <laughs> mm. so that actually sounds nice and crispy. <laughs> I want a new steak. <laughs> I saw the fucking steak down the... Um, down at the stand looked amazing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it was sliced like they do at Wolfgang still. Oh, nice. I told you I had the best ribs I ever had I in know. my life there. I should put that out on my Instagram stories. Folks, yeah. I just had the best ribs in my whole life. It's fucking great. And then I worry other people go there and go, you know what? I had better ribs one time. You know what? I wouldn't trust their opinion. Thank you. I wouldn't trust you to say the Pledge of Allegiance. You should, because apparently I don't know the first Say thing. it fast. Just go. Pledge of Allegiance, uh, fuck. <laughs> to no, there's not to fuck. Just, just say it fast. How's, how's go. it start? Go. Just, I pledge, just, I pledge just, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. For those we trust, and with, for which it stands, united will fall. What? what? <laughs> That'd be terrible. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. If we're not united, we, well, I, I lost it. Yeah, you lost it, all right. I feel like they didn't make me say it too often. Until... Every day. <laughs> <laughs> you had to Literally every, every day. day. Every day we make our children say a pledge of allegiance. Turn to the flag. Yeah. It's, I didn't like it. And on your heart. 
and swear on your own heart, child. I didn't like it as a kid. It felt really weird to it. stand and turn to the flag and pledge. Um, with a picture of the president near the flag. There was a kid in our school, and I believe his family was from uh, Saudi Arabia, and he, uh, his name was Aluk, and he didn't. His parents said he should not have to say the Pledge of Allegiance, and he was allowed to sit during the Pledge of Allegiance, and I thought that was so cool. First like, of all, Aluk doesn't even have to pledge. I think this. I think it would be wrong if he did pledge. It's not his country. <laughs> right. That seems more treasonous than not pledging. Yeah. yeah. They're like, it's lying. It's like somebody taking communion who hasn't gone through all the steps. This was Chris. I pledge allegiance to the snowflake <laughs> to make sure no one bullies me <laughs> or tries to call me names. <laughs> yes, I did, Kentucky Colonel. I did say I was going to Houston. Um. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, you took care of that problem for me, huh? I did. I sent an email last night. Yeah. So reached out to the fella and just waiting to hear back from him. Can I just say something? You have solved this mystery faster than fucking Chris Stanley could have ever done. I know. I, when I, I saw that text from you, I was shocked that the ball was already rolling. And that was, I actually sent that email last night. So I, I, I gave you guys the night before I informed you. Yeah. Here's the other thing, Chris. Yeah, Ron. You used to be the lone wolf, right? Uh-huh. Now you should be the pack of wolves, and you're the beta wolf. Yeah. Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Had you given me that fucking paper, I, I would have solved he it. I did. He figured it out while we were sitting here. That's how he got the You would have paper. wiped your sweaty forehead with that paper, and you would have never been able to email the fella. I don't wipe myself with paper. <laughs> First of all, you that's, the first, your ass? that's the first really problem. You should. That's the first th issue I have with you that You don't wipe? He, he does, but with his pant leg. <laughs> no. I don't wipe They call me crust pants. Oh, Chris. <laughs> you know, I'm really concerned how what? dry your ha hand is. You really need to moisturize. I don't moisturize at all. This is all natural. And I just also want to issue an apology for touching Vito's hand. Um, Good. It's not the example I want to set for my daughter that I just touched my coworker's hand. <laughs> touched the human. But they're very dry. Yeah. Oh I, my God. What is that from Lifton? Yeah. I just saw this because I had no idea of it. You know how I do uh, New Year's Eve at the stand every year? Yes. It's kind of a tradition. Here's the lineup Josh Wesson. Vladimir Kamano, Giannis Papas, um, Shane Gillis, Bonnie McFarlane, Rich Voss, Joe DeRosa, Janine Garofalo, Tim Dillon. Whoa, that's wow. going to be so funny. That's going to be a phenomenal show. That's an unbelievable show. Five shows, complimentary bubbly toast. Can't even call it champagne, I guess. <laughs> It's not from the region. <laughs> Open bar, prefix packages, and these comedians. That's great. That's awesome. And then Patrick wrote, I'm not messing around this year. Wow. <laughs> He's the one who booked it. It just came out two minutes ago. It's the first time I heard of it. So we, when you uh, were about to read that, I was like, I can't believe they already planned ahead of... Uh, New Year's Eve, and then I'm like, it is later in the year than I it's, realized. Yeah. It's I keep late to put out, you know, yeah. your New Year's Eve package. By the way, this is on Instagram. It's Chris De, um, De Stefano, and he's in. Look at this. He's in Disney, and there's his, Disney World, and there's his daughter dressed as a princess walking along with her. That is so damn cute. She's really a doll. First of all, she is a doll. The best hair. Yeah. But what a good dad, right? Yeah. I mean, you know how hard it is just you and a little princess going to Disney World together? Yeah. Most men couldn't pull that off. That is adorable. She's so cute. Little girls kill me. 
Yeah. And Chris does too when yeah. he tries to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Right. So cute <clears throat> when they're I'll, at this age. I think I'll get it one day. Such a fun age. Mm, 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 Are you gonna try to say it? Like he started those. to just lick his lips. That tongue movement was terrible. It was really upsetting. I pledge allegiance to the flag Steve of the United Boy. States of America, to who we trust, oh, no. for which it stands. <laughs> okay. One nation for them all, <laughs> united with liberty. The United States. <laughs> the United States. One nation liberty. for them all. <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff in Boston. Gail, how are you? Hey, Jeff. Hey, um, guys, thanks for uh, taking my call. It's my birthday this weekend, and my fiance and I are going to be in New York City. Brought her to see uh, the kids, Pizza Kids. Phenomenal show, Ronnie. You did an excellent job. Thank you. Yeah. And, um, so now I got her hooked on comedy, so we're trying to figure out where should we go this weekend. Uh, I'm going to be at the cellar. Those are always good shows. I'll be there Friday, late, the very late show Friday, and also I'll be there on Saturday for like four shows. Stand is also a great place. Uh, New York Comedy Club is a great place. Uh, Gotham is a great place. You're not going to go too wrong with uh, stand up in the city. Not, nice. not until so you get the danger we're fields. Staying over, <laughs> uh, so we're staying over, <laughs> uh, living in Boston. I was in some bad places over in Rockstar the other day looking for, yeah. uh, Chris, you'll appreciate this. I actually own a marijuana dispensary. Oh, sick. Good for you, my friend. Yeah. Seems like it's a big deal now, you know? Everybody's saying, yeah. like I have people tell me, like, oh, you should get an illegal weed business. He goes, there's a lot of money in it. I'm like, you should have been around for the illegal weed business. <laughs> we were making a fucking hand over fist. We knocked the bottom out of that shit. No taxes. No, no taxes. taxes. Not one. Matter of fact, even if you tried to pay taxes, they'd arrest you. <laughs> what is this tax money for? That marijuana business I have going. It's doing really well. You know, that is part of what you get in trouble for when you're doing any kind of thing like that. Oh, right. They're also like, where's your fucking taxes set? I go, Texas? I don't live in Texas. <laughs> uh, let's say it one more time. We're going to take a break. When we come back, and this is a spoiler alert, we're going to discuss um, The Irishman, which is Marty Scorsese's new movie that already is going to Netflix after just a couple of weeks. The, uh, it won the only two major awards that have been given out this year. One best picture. Uh, I forget what the first one was, and the second one was the New York Film Critics mm -hmm. Awards. So it is the fast track right now for being the Oscar winner. It would only be the second pictures of Marty's to ever do, uh, do that. So let's uh, break here. Back. And we, spoiler alert, if you don't want to hear it, we're going to discuss The Irishman. <laughs> Faction Talk 103, it's the Bennington Show! Dish Network calls their TV installers service technicians. That's their official title, at least. But on the job, customers call them shut up, no way. Why? Because the service technician has just shown them something they've never seen before, the new Dish voice remote with Google Assistant button. See, with Dish, you tell your remote what you want to watch and it comes on. But say the TV room is too bright or too hot, all those smartphone things that you have. Yep, you can also control those with your voice remote. Dish lives to surprise people with new technology. So they love all the no ways they've been getting. But yes way, yes all the way. Now control your TV at home with Dish. Introducing the new Dish voice remote with Google Assistant. Dish tuned into you. Voice functionality requires internet connected hopper, Google account, and compatible device. Google is a trademark of Google LLC. To learn more, dial 1 844 call Dish, visit dish.com, or find a local retailer near you. We'll be right back. This is Faction Talk 103, The Bennington Show. is back and this 
is Faction Talk 103. It's the Bennington Show. Get back in your fucking cells, inmates, because it's time for Warden Vito's Football Lockdown. to this week's Football Lockdown! Your first pick on this week's Lockdown. You got Steelers and Cardinals. You're gonna take those Cardinals at plus two and a half. You know why? Because the Cardinals got beat the shit out of last week. And you know what? That ain't gonna happen two weeks in a row. So you take those Cardinals at plus two and a half. Cardinals all the way. Lockdown! Your second pick, and as always, this pick is brought to you by Scared Straight. The little guy on the corner. Bring your fucking ass over here. Look at this. This ain't nothing but a goddamn baby. Seahawks at Rams. You're gonna take the Seahawks at minus one. LA fans suck. This is basically a home game for the Seahawks. There's gonna be a lot of grunge bros in the audience wearing flannels and rooting for their beloved Seattle Seahawks. Lockdown! Now we're happy to announce another brand new sponsorship for this week's Lockdown. The brand new sponsorship, the third pick is brought to you by Cool Cigarettes. The coolest taste in any cigarette. You can trade them for commissary goods. You can use whatever you need. Cool cigarettes providing this week's third pick. Lockdown! Colts at Bucks. We rode the Bucks last week. We're gonna ride the Bucks again. Yo, oh, yo, yo, oh, a pirate's life for me. They're playing the best football they've played this season, and they're gonna keep it going at home. Colts at Bucks. Take those bucks at minus three. Lockdown! And as always, your Lockdown Ramen Cup of Noodles Roundup. Nobody noodles like cup of noodles. From this one. You're going to take the bucks at minus three, the Seahawks at minus one, and the Cardinals at plus two and a half. This has been your Lockdown. You can now leave your set. Um, so Cup of Noodles just does the roundup, right? Just the last part where you say all the same things again? Yeah, they, they, they bought the roundup. That's where I just quickly give you a they recap of all my picks. Did they hear how muddy their production sounds? Like a barely, if you didn't mention Cup of Noodles, I wouldn't know who it was. Um, I just realized why they joined up. Commissary food. Commissary food. The same reason for cool cigarettes. They got in on the... Smart. Uh-huh. And we have one spot left, so I'm looking for a company. We got the opening is pick real? is up for sale. So if you're out there and you work in sales, clip me up. Maybe a shiv company might want to get <laughs> oh, in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe the Swiss Army Knife brand. Does anyone make toilet wine? Okay, we could look into a toilet. I mean, like, I guess you guys are officially on the sales team for the lockdown, so this is exciting. You're getting carried away now. <laughs> We're just going to have a couple moments of fun with you. I'm not making a commitment. You know? <laughs> I have an exclusive deal. <laughs> um, all right, Chris, you wanted to say something that's so important to you. It was very uh, pressing. You can, you can bid on a chance to co-host the Bennington Show thanks to Hunger Thine. Why don't you bid? I, it's pretty high right now. Uh, you can bid uh, Hunger Thine, Charity a Buzz. A way to sell it. <laughs> go, to Char- go to Bennington Show on Twitter for the link to bid. Thanks, thanks to Hunger Thine and Charity Buzz. So how do you do it? You go to at Bennington Show on Twitter. You can get the link to the auction for Charity Buzz to bid on a chance to, to co-host the Bennington Show. What is that for? I got my 20 back. You tried to pay? Yeah. It's never going to happen. <laughs> Why? I'm treated to coffee every day. Well, it's because the other guys don't drink coffee. <laughs> they all drink coffee. I'm like, yeah, you can't, You are going to throw in 70 <laughs> 
I got the lock locked down. I got the fucking lock down. I got the lock locked down. I got the fucking lock down. <laughs> Do you even have a theme song for you, for yours? Uh, yeah. Was it's... that uh, Leeds looking? Run no, out. Leeds wasn't out there. That's just Andy walking by. Andy has Leeds hair. He does. does. Yeah. And these stupid Leeds. frosted uh, windows. All right, coming up in just a couple of moments, we're going to be uh, giving our... Bennington Show review <laughs> of The Irishman. Uh, yeah, you guys all you guys all watched it over the weekend. You're kind enough to wait for me as I as I caught up. It mm. took me some time, and last night I finished it up, and I have officially watched The Irishman. Spoiler alert! In thirty seconds, spoiler alert! In thirty seconds, we will be talking about Martin Scorsese's latest masterpiece. The Irishman, the Irishman, from the man who brought you Mean Streets, Taxi Driver, and a bunch of other films. <laughs> this is a new film about the life of Frank Sheeran, an American hero. A troop <laughs> came back. We support the troops, Earl. Mm -hmm. you we have support to. the troops. All right, 10 seconds away from the spoiler alert. Of the Martin Scorsese room, The Irishman. <laughs> Five second countdown. <laughs> oh Here comes The Irishman. If you haven't seen it yet, this is going to spoil it. We're going to say how it ends. The Irishman. <laughs> If you don't want to find out who dies, you better turn the channel or turn it down. Oh, by the way, Norton's in this film too. Irishman. Another 60 seconds at it. What? <laughs> Look at Robert De Niro. He looks real young. <laughs> How did Bobby D get to 30 again? <laughs> All right, we are going to talk about the film. The Irishman recently won two major awards, and one is the New York Film uh Critics Awards, and I forget the other award, but uh, oh, it was prestigious. Mm. It was a prestigious. Yeah. The prestige. I, I think it was the Oscars. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> How yet. did they get one already? Well, everybody knows it's over. Hmm. Well, we don't know, but it'll come up. You're not going to find that on Wikipedia so soon. All right, uh, Gail, you finally got to see it. Who do you want to start this? Do you want to start it or throw it out to one of these kids? Oh, I think I'm going to I'm gonna throw it out. All right, take your keys and just chuck your keys at that person. Okay. If they drop it, it moves now. I'm I am going to throw it over to uh, the one who's most likely to be mobbed up in this group, Vito. Oh, Vito Calise. Vito what was your thoughts on The Irishman? I had a lovely time watching it. Me and Leslie watched it on Thanksgiving. Nice. Um, I really enjoyed The Irishman. I was worried in the first few minutes of the movie because um, I thought the CGI was going to really take me out of it because that first shot in the truck was really bad. But after that, it kind of settled itself. Story-wise, I loved that it was three and a half hours long because I really by the end of it, I really felt like, invested in the character mm. and it really felt like I sat there and watched somebody's life. Okay, let's go to Earl Douglas. Quick summary. I love the movie. Absolutely loved it. I I was about a half hour into it and I'm like this is going to be an amazing ride and it was. Love the performances, love the direction, had a great flow to it. The story was fantastic. Love the film. Chris Stanley. I Thoroughly enjoyed The Irishman. I love seeing Joe Pesci acting again. I fucking loved De Niro, and I especially loved Al Pacino. I thought all their performances. Hey, I'm running the union now. <laughs> <laughs> Booby Kennedy, you're not going to get us. Who you with? You're with me, Al Pacino. Gail. Uh, I thought there were great performances. 
I thought Pesci was phenomenal. I, I thought they were all great. I was not comfortable with the CGI. I never felt settled when it came to that. I, I was just kept on being like, did we really need De Niro to have blue eyes for an entire film? It was blue so, eyes. So necessary. You know, uh, I never noticed that. Yep. As did I. It, it took me a second to be like, why is it extra unsettling? And I'm like, oh, to make him look more Irish, they gave him blue eyes instead of brown eyes. Um, uh, jumping back and forth between uh, youth and elderly was not uh, my favorite thing. Is watching, you know, the CGI change. It was not great for me. Um, I also struggled a little bit with the plot heavy stuff. You know what I mean? Just, just kind of like uh, narration, explaining what happens, and then seeing the thing that it just explained. And I was like, well, he just said that. I guess he didn't need to see it. You know, there was a lot of those moments. And I and I know that Scorsese enjoys that form. He likes playing with narration and he likes mob movies. And like certainly he does it well. But I think uh, you know, I tired of that. So you uh would you even give it a passing grade? I give it a passing grade, sure, but I I don't think it was like I don't think I had as great of a, a experience as everyone else. All right, uh, my quick summary is um, the CGI doesn't bother me as much. I mean, to me, it's like seeing somebody with a wig or any other, you know what I mean, like or doing an accent or whatever, you know, you have. So that part never threw me out of the story. I thought, you know, uh, I was just thinking this is like kind of the third true mob movie in the in, in a row. And the third time with Scorsese that you don't know if you could trust the narrator at all. Right. You know what I mean? So that's that I that thought I find too. to be really ironic in uh, Scorsese's mob movies. Um, and I'm not counting the depart the departed because there's not an Italian in the bunch. I'm going to call this a mob movie because he worked for the mob, the actual mob. Um, and I think. He did something that he tried to do differently than he was young. I think the people that are turned off from this movie, it's because they like mob movies. And this is different from that. Right. This movie I found to be so sad on so many fucking levels. It was really sad. And by the time I got to the end of it, I felt drained about life. I'm like, why do we do any... Why do we you know, invest ourselves into our jobs instead of our families? Why do we... I thought it know? was more realistic in that way. There there was a departure from the, hey, we had a go for a lot of years and everything was great. And the There was just kind of like, it was a job. And it, yeah. ne- you know what I mean? You, and you, a terrible you, job. Yeah. It wasn't even an enjoyable job. The Irishmen just lived in a regular house. They yep. all kind of lived in regular houses. Um there was, I did like that there was very little romance on that. Level. Yeah, very, very little. And I think he did that on purpose to not, you know, what he did for finance in that other fucking movie that everybody loved, the fucking Wolf of Wall Street, where yeah. you're, you know, enjoying the fruits of your sin. I mean, this guy, he carried around sin, you know what I mean? And it was even before he was in the mob. He carried the sin right. that uh, that he committed in the war. And I found that to be like really ironic that this guy did war crimes and was, you know, for whatever reason, I'm not even saying they turned him that way, but they could pick out the guy who could easily do a war crime. Right. You know? And I'm also so weirded out by people who can be sociopaths or probably even a psychopath and still have the wife and daughter and still right. go home. Like, what are you looking for? Why can't you just go off and be this monster? Right. Why are you dragging these other people into this? I don't you think know? I loved either the um, the kind of like the precocious kid who knows too much as a, you know what I mean, as a way to ground him in life. I don't know. I kind of really, I felt that was part of the real sadness that his own kid could look at him and see what it like. And see, bad person he was. Yeah, I mean, I think kids can pick up on the fact, you know, uh, that that you know, Chris Stanley carries this shit around all the time. He was a little kid and knew that his dad right. had problems, True. you know, and he knew that it wasn't a safe place. As a little kid, he sat around and thought, I don't want a brother or sister because I don't want to bring another mouth into this family. I think right. kids pick up on it. And she, 
and and we don't know how much of that was his own guilt, you know. True. That he was just looking at her. Because a lot of times she was just like staring at him, and then he would feel like the weight right. of, oh, what am I doing? Yeah. I also think that this is the type of film, and I feel this way about Paul Thomas Anderson films, that as you watch it more, you're going to gain, yeah, you know, more of appreciation. And I think that this is one of those films that, look, this film wouldn't have been made this way. He wouldn't have put out a three and a half hour fucking film unless Netflix was like, okay. You know right. what I mean? Like everything that people are bitching about. Every director would yeah. make his fucking movie three and a half hours. People don't realize right. that 100%. Tarantino would do that. Yes. Coppola would do it. Everybody, People are going, well, you have to put a movie down because that's what you've been trained to watch movies. Despite that the fact way. that I watched it in segments, I only did that because I have a one-year-old. I did think that the length of the story fit the story. You right. know what I mean? I, I but just... it is not really a movie when it gets to be that length. It's more like a, a, a short series or something. Right. I mean, only because that's the way Hollywood trained us. But, um, you know, I, I think that there's just so fucking much mm. in this movie. And I get you don't get the things that you normally get in a mob movie, and that it's going to disappoint people. Now, uh, I, oh, I'm going to just say this: I thought Norton was great, man. And Dude, I was a guy. Was so good. I was a guy who was a Rickles fan in the '70s, and I thought I'm very surprised too. Yeah, I'm embarrassed to say it. That fucking Jimmy picked up on so many little things. He really did. It was such a great scene. Such a great moment. What you think is Sebastian Maniscalco? I thought his, he was great. I thought he was great too. Really, it was awesome. really good. I didn't realize it was Sebastian Maniscalco until afterwards. So I looked like the cast. You're I, kidding! I, I, I knew it right away. I thought he darkens his face a little bit. He did. I it feels Bruce like Scorsese he did, did right. later in the fucking shading. Yeah, he was fucking great. Yeah, um, and he, he was, was really frightening, good. and yeah. he was fucking you know everything you wanted. So Bobby Kelly felt closer to you. He was even less than you. Um, I'm not liking the phone. He goes, it just, it didn't make sense. Like at one minute, Sebastian Maniscalco was going to kill Norton. And the next minute he was happy. I'm just staring at him, you know. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to miss it that much, I don't know what to say to you now. I don't know what to say. Yeah, I thought Man Maniscalco. Also, I didn't realize that was the way that Crazy Joe was killed. I thought he was killed walking out of the place, not shot inside and then on the street, you yeah. know? I always in my mind thought, oh yeah, they waited till he came out and fucking nailed him there, which right. seems like a better plan to me. Yeah. Um, Chris, where do you put this with the Scorsese movies or are you not ready yet? I mean, I've only saw it once. And I was also thinking like, I've seen Scorsese movies over and over and over again so many times. Yeah. That it's, I feel like I'm gonna have to watch it again and again. Yes. Because I feel like it's not fair to the other movies or even The Irishman. Yeah. <laughs> and again, the 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 CGI, I I was really worried about it from all the fucking stories that came out for the months leading up to it. And I, was I like, didn't read anything about it. I, I was like, this really is fine. Well. There was only one part where I'm like, well, they should have used the younger person to play De Niro and John from behind. That's when he was stomping the guy. Yes. Yeah. He, looked, he kind of looked his age then. Right. That's yeah. um, But if you've watched movies, you've seen John Wayne do that. And every, right. Like, I don't know why we, we want this hyper-realism with Scorsese. Yeah. Oh, I, and by the way, I thought the cinematography was unbelievable. Really beautiful. Everything that I bitched about with the Joker was <laughs> for those reasons. You didn't feel like you had moved into that reality of that time period. Mm -hmm. And this was 100% yeah. felt like you were experiencing that time period. I think that for me, the CGI is like that just something looks slightly off. You know what I mean? It almost is like the face doesn't match the size of the head. Like it's just there's something just slightly eerie. And I I, I keep... get that. But I've also watched movies where people pretend that they're fucking gladiators. You know what I mean? I get yeah. that, you know, we're going to act like this is the old West or whatever. It's just another tool. It may it may be better. It may not. It does, does, I don't need that much. Once I'm into a story, I don't fucking need anything. You yeah. know what I mean? I really but I think just for that, need. For that reason, I'd rather not be taken out of it with CGI. You know what I mean? Like, I'd rather say, like, he's younger in this moment. 
as opposed to like now I'm looking at a, like a computerized version. It may that. be only because you haven't seen it before. Just uh, I gotta say, I mean, I've watched movies where you could tell the guy wasn't really driving and they're mm -hmm. running a movie and whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's fucking tell the story to this. Um, how about you, Vito? You're le ready to place it yet? It's hard because like there's like my favorite. My favorite movie of his is Mean Streets, and it's for such a different reason than why I like this movie so much. But like, I I would rank this, I I like I I would rank this really high. I I had a really great time watching it. Uh, let's go over here to Polly in Buffalo. Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? How's hey, it going? Ronnie, I'm a big fan, man. I've never called into the show. I just got to give you your respect. You're a fucking hilarious, guy. Um, I got to be honest with you guys. I thought the movie sucked. Like, I have a lot of friends that feel the same way, Paulie. I, I expected a lot more from Scorsese. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, the hype with, you know, Goodfellas and Casino. And I'm but another. See, I'm one of those guys that hated Taxi Driver, too. Like, I wasn't a huge fan of Taxi Driver. Oh, I don't know I what to say to that. I don't blame for that, you know what I mean? But I just couldn't get into it. It was too fucking, it was just weird. But I got to agree with your daughter as far as the superposed faces on the guys. Like, yeah. when De Niro was the dude's ass, it looked like he was having a fucking stroke. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I totally get it. There's no doubt it was a, a way to try to tell the story. But you lost me a taxi driver. I mean, uh, yeah. everything was going along. I was respecting your opinion. <laughs> but here's the thing that you have to know about the Irishman. It's not Goodfellas. And probably because he's already made a Goodfellas. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's not a show up and you're going to get a hell of a ride during this movie. Huh. All right. And I'm sure he has felt bad. Over the years, as people have said to him, oh, you're making, you know, you're romanticizing this yeah, culture. stuff. I, right. I thought the film was, it did for the gangster movie the way, like, Unforgiven did for the Western. It took a different direction. It's, it's like, there's a darkness to all of this, you know, the murders and all of this stuff that goes along with it. There's a, you know, almost a haunted spirit attached to it yeah i would yeah. agree with you i think you nailed it and here's the other thing every time that we click up and tell you how that person died you know what i mean just go made you sit, sit as you watch this why would anyone why would anyone think it's a good idea to be involved in this it doesn't look fun and it doesn't yeah. look and you know these were the guys this was the the mob that i grew up local mob reading about yeah and I was uh, the bellman in a hotel where Frank Sheeran used to come in a little fucking motel. Wow. And everybody was petrified of him and uh, much more than they ever showed in the movie. And I had never seen him other because it, I was told, you don't deal with this guy. If something comes in, you know, the management handles it. No one wants him here. No one can get rid of him. We're all fucking, you know. A wreck about this guy and they never gave off that vibe in the fucking about how intimidating that, yes yeah i mean everybody that was in this little fucking which is just a ramada was petrified that he would even want something okay so this is what i'm thinking it's probably too difficult to sit there particularly when you're talking about like classic scorsese movies like where it ranks but where would you put it with his more recent like Better or worse than Departed? Well, it's a totally different movie. Departed is a fun, almost, you know, romp that's right. based on these these two things that are happening at the same time and they intersect. So it's very much a movie. This doesn't happen right, right. in real life. Um, and that's why he didn't call the, the, the guy fucking white. You know what I mean? They changed his name and everything. And this... You see the the arc of a life does not tell a great story. You know what I mean? Yeah. It is not a thing. It's so much more depressing than that kind of a movie yeah. when a guy is losing his wife and figuring out where he's going to be buried and how he's going to get older and all of his friends are, you know what I mean? Like it's so fucking sad that this the sadness behind his eyes was heartbreaking in this movie. Too. Yeah, and the fact that he was attempting to, you know, have, like, last fucking rights, but he was too stupid to even understand it. Mm -hmm. You know, you could see he was not a smart man. He was a dumb fucking person.
Right. And by the way, Pesci was unbelievable he in this was movie. So ridiculous. Good. Yeah. I mean, I thought I thought everyone was great, but it was just so good to see him on the screen, and it was just and him cr- fucking kill it. Yeah, he was when, so so good. When Pesci was just staring at the banquet scene. And uh, staring at the daughter dancing with Al Pacino, mm-hmm. it was just like, just his looks in that movie was... I um... know. He's really, really great. Uh, Zach in Georgia. Hey, guys. How y'all doing? Yeah. Going? Hey, I really think this might have been Joe Pesci's greatest role. Um, I know a lot of times he kind of plays this outlandish kind of character, you know, crazy. Uh very violent, but to see him kind of be the guy that was the calm, cool, collected one. Yeah, and matter of fact. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he was... uh, Yeah, I mean, all the people who said the CGI took him out of the role, I would feel that way when you go, oh, there's Harvey Cattell, there's... You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, all those things should take you out of a movie (laughs) unless you're caught up in the story. Now, again... Maybe it was less for me than other people because this is where I grew up and these were the gangsters that were around when I was a kid. And, the, you know, I, I mean, I would have fucking, I would look at even some of the row houses and shit. It just felt so weirdly familiar. I mean, the detail work on that was tremendous. But it, was, it wasn't the same kind of beginning, middle, end Mm-hmm. Story. Yeah. It's just. It's just not that. Uh, John in Atlanta. You know, hey, when you watched the movie, I mean, when it ended, I was like, hey, that was good. I liked it. But um, upon reflection, it held my interest for three and a half hours. So to me, that's a mark of a good movie. Is that if you can hold your attention, and then you think about all the scenes and and uh, what went on. It's like, I thought it was really good upon reflection. When it was over, I thought it was good, but now I think it's really good. Yeah, I think that'll be something that we decide as time goes by. And I'm also feeling the same way about uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, where some people are like, oh, it bored me. It never bored me. I was just so weirded out. By, by the, the choice that he made, right, 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 that it left a really weird taste in my mouth. But I went back to see it again, mm-hmm. and I'm going to watch it again. You know, more right. times as time goes by, because that can happen to you with a film. It doesn't happen to you with a film that truly stinks. You know what I mean? Uh, absolutely. I think if you if you are even moved to have a conversation sometimes where you're like, I don't know, do you really feel like this and that? And then you're like, well, if I'm if I'm digging deep into this movie, there's something there. I got to tell you, when I watched Inherent Vice, it was the same thing where I'm like, wow, this is really kind of weirdly fascinating and I'm not keeping up, but I'll watch the, you know, I don't understand where the plot is going. I watched that film six, seven times. Yeah. I still fucking do not understand it. I've watched it twice. And I love it more every time I see it. There's something about that film that's just really, really great. I was trying to explain that to someone once who was was asking me if I liked the movie. And I was like, yeah. And they were like, but what was it about? And I was like, oh, the plot? No. (laughs) I did not have a lot of uh, uh, Tommy in Tennessee. Bennington, yeah. love the show. I truly, truly believe you guys are the best thing on the radio, period. Man, me too. Um, getting, <laughs> you guys are so like you. Getting into the movie, the, I love the movie. I, I thought it was fantastic. There's a really, really cool book written by a guy named Frank Regano uh, called Mob Lawyer. He was the actual lawyer for uh, Santo Traficani and for Jimmy Hoffa and for Carlos Marcello down in Louisiana. Um, and if you had read that book prior to seeing this movie, this would be one of the best movies you've ever seen because right. it was fantastic the way that it was followed the followed the story. So it kind of lines up, Ron, with what you were talking about about knowing these guys as you were growing up. Uh, having a backstory is really important to this movie, I think. Well, yeah, there's so much weirdness about that because he uh, and Sheeran gave off this Forrest Gump of the actual mafia. Mm -hmm. Now, the fact is, I don't know 
to this day whether it's believable or not. But I will tell you when I was a kid and Sharon was staying at a hotel, the the word that people used to say then was his name was in the fucking uh, day planner for Jimmy Hoffa. He was the only name that day. meet for meet with blah blah blah. And I heard that back then, which was before he was picked up, yeah. and and twenty years before. He did By the way, story. like also some just like some of the history because I feel like Jimmy Hoff is like I've known about him yeah. and like little stories here and there. So this was like really the first time I felt like I could like see his life laid out. Yeah, I felt before. the same. And I was like it gave me like a lot of perspective on that. Because I feel like that's that's been a reference point my whole life, but I never really understood it. Well look, I I this is the thing that you know about uh, uh, Jimmy Hoff and the unions. Even when I was out in Pittsburgh and we played that theater, that was built, Carnegie built that theater and gave it to the city of Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. And the woman who was taking me around, showing me this beautiful theater, said he did that as kind of blood money because the Pinkertons killed fucking nine guys that were striking, right? <laughs> And he was getting bad uh, press, and he tried to turn it around with this theater. So what would happen is they would hire their own security to beat up union guys, right? The union, which was the first time in the history of America where a guy could go to work, feed his family, get hospitalization. This is all Hoffa's behind that get vacation, get Sundays off, get overtime. They were being crushed. They brought the mob in to defend them, right? That's how they teamed up with the mob. So you always hear Hoffa was, you know, tied up with the mob. And there's no doubt that that's true. But it was a necessary evil that he did it. Right. And also the CIA. Yeah. Was with the mob. The fucking U.S. government was with the mob at different times. They used them in World War II. They used them in the Bay of Pigs. So this thing now, a lot of the stuff against Hoffa is just like, oh, it's terrible. They killed, you know, American industry. It's the, when people talk about MAGA and making America great, they're talking about this time. Right. And yeah. the reason why... You know, the wife didn't have to work unless she wanted to. The reason why you were able to take a vacation with the fucking Cape May is because of those union jobs finally forcing uh, the big corporations to share. So many people to this day consider Jimmy Hoffa to be a great man. And all you have to do is look at the story. Right. Did he do some good things? And he do, did some bad things, of yeah. course, but he really did. Well, that was what I just thought was so fascinating is that, like, what a complex character, not in a movie, but in life. I just thought, you know, the, the like, the, there was so much depth from dark to light with yeah. everything he did. Um, let's go to Brad in Chicago. Hey, Brad. Hi, Gail. Hi, Ron. Hey, buddy. Hey. I just wanted to say before uh, I, I give my point that I was one of your uh, Chicago audiences and uh, what an honor it was to see you uh, in, in your uh, real environment. Can I, can I tell you something? That night was so much fun. And I'm going to put was, the uh, yeah. It's super special for me too. Uh, you you actually stepped out of the line to shake my hand. Uh, 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 I live a few blocks away from uh, Molly's, and my kaka uh, uh, is a good friend. So anyway, it, oh, it was uh, a wonderful night, and it was super special. Brad, for I, I remember you very much. Mike wanted to make sure they came over. He's uh, at Molly's all the time. He always listens to the show. Uh, and uh, I thank you for being nice. Hey, did did Molly's and Mike get a really big, big uh, hand there too? It was hilarious to me. <laughs> oh, are you yeah. kidding? It's per perfect. But right? anyway, I think this movie is is uh, uh, Martin Scorsese's sort of meditation on his own mortality. Interesting. Yeah. That's a good call. Yeah. Because and, he's uh, all those guys are getting to that age. Right. You know. Yeah. Aren't we all, my yeah. friend? Uh, and uh, and the thing that amazed me uh, were 
uh, the scenes in Florida and most especially in Miami Beach, I got shivers uh, how they recreated uh, uh, the Deauville Hotel, which I have yeah. a, a long history. I mean, just incredible uh, detail work, and it really, it really sets you into the period. Uh, Brad, I'm going to send you into the pretty good uh, prize yeah, closet because oh, um, the the <laughs> fact of bringing up the mortality is a gigantic point of that movie. Yeah, you know, and it was the part. That in a lot of ways is a lot more terrifying, you know what I mean, well, I, I than being did, in a gun battle. I did think that this was a movie that, like, he could have only directed at this juncture right. of his career and his life, but, right? Yeah, but you know that uh, when he was older and he was living in the home, I have an uncle that he reminded me of that oh, yeah. the whole time, who's, you know, whose wife is gone and he's taking care of his own stuff and seeing a lot of that is... Like a good thing. He's like, oh, I'm in this home, you know, where I live. And he goes, you know, I got buddies there and I can drive in and out. And he goes, but as I get older and sicker, I can mo keep moving along where there's more and more care. And when he told me that, I'm like grabbing the arms of the chair, right? <laughs> yeah. It sounds like the scariest fucking thing yeah. in the world to me. Because now you're sure. just like, oh, you're moving on to section two? Yeah, you know I mean? uh, right. Like that's your life. But yeah. that's the kind of... Um, you know, like there he was at the end of the life. He didn't have anybody to pick that casket out. He didn't have anybody to pick the yeah. mausoleum out. It was just really sad. Yeah. Hey, Ken, in Rhode Island. Hi. Hey, how you doing? How's it hey. going? Um, I had an interesting thing right here in our house. My wife was a few years younger, and I liked the film more than she did, a lot more, although she really liked it. Um, and uh, my feeling was it really helped. I think this is echoing what another caller said, but it really helped if you actually live through the events that are depicted in the film. I mean, I remember when Gala was shot. I remember when Columbo was shot. I remember when Hoffa went to jail and when he got out. Tony Pro and his wife lived in the same building as my parents, and they wow. knew each other. So it really helped that I could, you know, directly relate to the stuff that was going on. I, I remember when it all happened, and uh, that really, really helped me to enjoy the movie even more, I think. You know, I've kind of felt the same way, and it wasn't really brought up in the film, but when they were wiping out so much of the Philly mob, Angelo and the Chicken Man, a lot of that had to do with the Philly had always controlled Atlantic City. And then New right. York was like, hey, there's gambling there now. Yeah. That's the next trillion dollar place. And they kind of broke the rules. You know what I mean? And they mm -hmm. literally right. went to war and they were exploding people. You know right. what I mean? Like literally <laughs> blowing people up. So that kind of stuff had brought back. A, and the funny thing is like when you, you would be like a, a spectator when you were a kid. You know what I mean? It would just be like another thing to follow yeah. any of that kind of mob stuff. In the same way that you could follow sports, you know? It was just like a fun thing to follow. Yeah. yeah. And now that you're older, you're like, oh, no, that's not all that romantic <laughs> right. at all. People dying. <laughs> I, I watched it with my mom, and she was pointing out to me, year because I didn't know what year certain things were. Right. And by death, she like when Umberto's clam shop showed up, she went, oh, this is where Joe Gallo dies, said the year. And then she even said, our Jersey Shore summer house, we lived across the street from Fat Tony Salerno. Right. So it was just like it was cool seeing her perspective of the movie throughout. I'm sure you're going to find out that your dad was poisoned. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, Mike and Yonkers. Yeah, I agree with what Ronnie said. At the end, I almost felt like it was better getting clipped than having to li live a long old life like that, you know, well, sitting in the, in the home. Everybody thinks like, oh, somebody lived a long life. Like that's beating the system. But. You know, just the the pain that's the, the daily pain that you feel as you get older. I mean, the human condition it's the, it's pretty fragile. The way they depicted Pesci's character at the end, where yeah. he couldn't eat the bread. And, yeah, he's uh, dunking. And then when they were wheeling him out, he says, I'm going to church. But here was the other thing when they were eating like that, right? Bread and wine, that's mm -hmm. a communion. Yeah. You know what I mean? So... Was he saying that they were blessed later in life, that they were forgiven later in life? You know, um, Scorsese was raised Catholic. He's always kind of, you know, gone back to the Catholic. And he was given Frank Sheeran 
and out as far as the Catholic religion right. is yeah. considered. But then he, he even let on that the guy didn't know the difference between right and wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, he didn't, I don't think he really had that gauge, that inner gauge. Um, let's go to Sean in San Francisco. Hey, hey, um, Ron, how are you? Yeah. And Gail? Hey, how's it going? Nice. Yeah, good, good. Hey, I want to talk about Anna Paquin uh, and her role in the movie. Um, I know some people were saying it was kind of crummy that she didn't have more lines and so forth. But uh, my wife and I both really felt like the fact that she had so few lines was what made her character so actually powerful in the film. And if you think about it, she was the only she was the only compass in his life, and she was the only one that could make him feel shame or reproach. And it was through that it was through that damning silence. I will say this: film. I didn't even know. That that was Anna Paquin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that until I read later. And then there's this blowback, like, where the, why don't the women get as many lines? Well, she, the family did not play a big part in their lives. The wives did not. Right. I, it's amazing to me that these guys would want wives and kids. Right. I mean, uh, she. it's interesting because she's the same adult as she was kid, right? It was more about her gaze right. that made him feel like guilt or shame. But it never changed him. And certainly with what happens with Hoffa, like it doesn't change. It, it, it she wasn't a part of his thought when that no. was no he, there was given to him. Yeah, he was be, just like he was upset for the reasons he was upset. But I don't think he was going. I I can't do this because of my kids. I think there was a line too where he said to her sister, "Everything I did, I did for." And she was like, "Fuck no, fuck you." You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Because that's a lie. That's a lie. Yeah. And. Uh, I mean, the Hoffa thing was just so sad so and funny. fucking just shitty. You know what I mean? There was. Uh, it's like he, he had a problem with it, right? Cause yeah. he, seemed, like, he seemed like he had a problem, but then he just did it real fucking easy. He yeah, I mean, his eyes welled up. I mean, that's how you know he has a problem with it because he just. There's a pause. Right. And you see that he's struggling with emotion, and then he gets to work. Yeah. But do you, have you ever been fired by somebody who likes you? You know what I mean? Like those things. Right. Like this kind of shit happens where you're like, hey, we're all family here at work, and then somebody gets fired, and everyone's like, kind of like, that sucks, but. I got to get my money, you know what I mean? So then you go on. Didn't you feel so bad there in the car and he's just like, um, he's like, you got your peace on you? Because I'm feeling like a little uneasy. Terrible. It made, like, it hurt my, and he like pats it. Right. It just hurt my heart so much. I felt it's so bad and, for him. And when he gets into that shitty place, he's like, this doesn't look good. Let's get out. Oh. And that's, you know, Ugh, you're so fucking sick. right. Made me so sick. And his stupid son with the fish. Yeah, I know. Mark in Toronto. Oh, hi. Yeah, I love the movie. But what drove me nuts is I noticed that De Niro and Pacino, in most of the scenes, they didn't seem to be acting together. It was always a headshot from behind and then a headshot from behind. And it's sort of that heat conspiracy that they never actually acted together. I know they were in scenes together, but it looked like they were never acting together. I don't know. I, 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 I did not pick up on that. Uh, no, yeah, they watch had. The movie again, and you notice they're both like you never see them together. It's always a headshot from behind. It's and a also, headshot from behind. It's also like there's a lot of the CGI moments, so that's why you're getting a lot of those shots. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it, both uh, all the scenes that they're together, they're made to look younger. So you know you're not getting. Yeah, my <laughs> union, your union, I <laughs> union. Poopy Kennedy. <laughs> Let's take one more. I didn't realize we shot through 45 minutes. Now I actually like the movie more than when I watched it. I'm looking, I really want to watch it again. And like yeah. that's to me when uh, you finish a movie and you're looking forward to seeing it again. You know, it's got to be good. John in Philly. Hey, Ron. How you doing, man? Love the show. Thanks, buddy. Listen, Latin Casino. Ah. Uh -huh. um, I was like 15 years old. I go down with a, an old guy, a neighbor, and we see Robert Goulet, and he's exactly like Will Ferrell. He makes everybody put your cigarettes out. Yeah. He can't, you know, he can't smoke while he's singing, and he does this whole big pompous nonsense. But I saw the Latin Casino, and I'm thinking, man, there's there's a flashback. I'm 60. I'm your age. Uh, you know, that was a that was a you had to go to the Latin Casino. Uh, my big sister would go to the Latin Casino, um, and. Obviously, this is the Latin Casino uh, was, I believe it was Barbara Walters' dad who owned the Latin Casino. Oh, really? Yeah. 
And um, the funny thing about it is anyone who went to shows at the Latin Casino had no idea that Woodstock had happened or, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That uh, Her Majesty's was a real disappointment for Stones fans. They were unaware of that. So they were still running in that, you know, kind of Vegas lounge type thing. But it was, you know, my sister went to see Bobby Vinton. You know, right. it was that kind of thing. So, um, but yeah, it was considered a big deal. And those Philly restaurants were the real places as well. All right, we got our buddy here. I, I, I literally would have closed out the show with this. I thought, <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have 10 minutes to discuss this. Yeah. Uh, Gail gives us the lightest grades I of all. I give it the lightest grade. Uh, give it a letter grade, Chris. A. A plus. A plus. B minus. And um, I'm going to give it an incomplete until I watch it a couple more okay. times. But I think I'm leaning more A plus or at least A than I am a B minus. Is it the movie of the year? I don't know. Could be. Could be. I'm very, very surprised, though, that mm -hmm. it's coming out winning right away. Uh, we'll be back with Mateo Lane. Mateo is basically... At the Latin Casino of New York City is <laughs> yeah. at Joe's Pub. Joe's Pub will be doing the Mateo Mariah Christmas happening Tuesday, December 17th. Publictheater.org for tickets. Mateo lands up next. And Chris will not tell anybody this, but Dan Perlman really wants us to plug his second show tonight. First show's sold out, but he's recording an album, uh, and he's a great kid, and we're all proud of him. Dan's recording his album at Union Hall tonight in Brooklyn, unionhallny.com for tickets. There are tickets left to the 10 p.m. show. That's in Brooklyn, Union Hall. Dan Perlman's uh, album recording, unionhallny.com for tickets. Right back, Benny. Welcome back to Bennington and Mateo Lane's in studio. Hey. What a nice round of applause. Yes. The Mateo Mariah Christmas is happening Tuesday, December 17th. There's nine, 20 tickets left. 9 p.m. Wow. So people better get tickets quick. So go to publictheater.org for tickets because it's happening at Joe's Pub in New York City. I went to I had my first rehearsal yesterday and it was so I, I my barber show, which has wildly evolved since last time, uh, which you guys are the nicest to let me come promote it like two years ago. Yeah. Um, but it's completely evolved into this great like little cult following, and we sell out Joe's Pub every month, and it's more stand-up and weird stuff. Like I'm way more comfortable now on stage singing. But that was like, oh, it's crit, you know, Mariah. I call December Mariah. So it's like Mariah's coming, so we decided to do a Mariah Carey Christmas concert, and uh, I did the rehearsal yesterday. And Mariah doesn't like to make things easy, no, <laughs> at all. She's just like a vocal acrobat, insanity. Everything is a ballad. Everything starts at zero, ends at a ten. Singer. And so you're gonna. It's gonna be a tough night to pull this off. Yes, I'm doing yeah. vocalizing because Barbara, you can kind of like not that she's difficult music, but. Uh, easy music, but like uh, it's not Mariah. Uh, Mariah's right. got a melisma on everything. Joe's Pub feels like the New York City I always imagined in my mind. You know what I mean? Right. I know, that you're sitting in so there, and it's a there. great show, and it's great food, and it's classy. And it's always like a unique show too. You yes. Know? It's like it's something totally different. And then you look over, and there's somebody sitting there that's famous. You know what I mean? It seems like, like somebody like vibe. you catch an eye, and then like somebody should just raise their glass to you. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I too am at Joe's Club. Yeah. yeah, it does. It is kind of like that. Show. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. I guess you're right. Mm -hmm. Hi guys, how are you? It's been so long since I've been on the show. I know. Where have you been? Everywhere. I have. I haven't been home in the past two months. I mean, I've been yeah. touring every weekend. I've been out of the city. Um, but then the past two months have just been insane. So I w I literally wasn't home for two months. What's the exhaustion like on that though? Do you get to a certain point? Well, it's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I actually, after I finished it, I called my manager and I was like, I love you and I'm happy for the work, but I can't do this again. Yeah, not like, like that. It, it was too much. Yeah. I, I didn't even get a chance to get home. And I went through a breakup and then I'm like, well, I'll join Grindr. I'll do it. I'll be That's a young exhausting. gay. I got kicked off. You they said, you're impersonating comedian Mateo Lane. You can't use someone else's photos. And I got kicked off Grindr. So I can't even get dick now. Do you really do look like Mateo Lane though? I do look like Mateo <laughs> Lane. More than most people realize. It's so, I was, uh, first of all, I had Pokemon, I got Pokemon Sword, so I was playing that in Salt Lake City, and then I had just grinder <laughs> open to the left of me. I was like, I am catching something today. I mean, yes, I was yeah. desperate Gotta and catch them all. need, oh, 
just I, I well, couldn't be any more. Where's desperate. the best grinder city though? Is there a city? New that, York. I mean, York. you just like you refresh and there's a new million, a page of new million men. But I'm not even like a big hookup guy. But I like I'm like Mariah. I like talking about sex, but I don't think I actually like having as much as I like talking about it. You like the idea of sex. Right. I always felt Britney was the same way. Yeah, like, Britney. You don't is know that how way. much sex she's had. Well, she three... had it at least twice. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, with partners, I think she's probably only a couple, like a handful. Right. But I think that also comes from like being sexualized really young. Yes. And she's like, that's me, I'm sexy. You Can know? you believe yeah. that at the, at, we used to ask her, we, per, per, you know, journalists, quotations or quotations, we ask her like when she's 17, are you a virgin? I mean, what? Yes. Who would ever right? think of asking a 17 year old girl that, you yeah. fucking pervert? Like, you really know, weird. you should go back and watch, remember the TV show, The New? Newlyweds, uh, which was um, Jessica Simpson. Yeah, Jessica oh, yeah. Simpson, and they. Uh, well, yeah. their marriage. They had one of those things where, oh, we'll pay for your marriage if we can televise it. The minister talked about her virginity, and tonight wasn't that her dad? Yeah, no, he didn't do this part. It was her oh. dad's friend, but he's like, tonight is the night that she will hand him the gift that her father has protected, and like this is in like two thousand three or something, right? Where it felt her like gift. we were somewhat. You know, beyond yeah. all that shit. How gross that you're. Ooh. Yes, like, my hymen is your gift. Yes, like the fuck. It's overrated, by the way. And what does <laughs> the man <laughs> give her? Yeah, yeah, it What's is it? overrated. By the way, it's also overrated taking someone's virginity. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah that's not the, fun. Yes, no, it's not nothing. the enjoyment factor that you're looking for. I don't want to. I don't want to. Well, can you imagine me as a top? But I'm like, I wouldn't want to top <laughs> someone as a bottom for the first time. Like right. that exactly. is just. Exactly, a virgin should only. Have sex with virgins for the first time. You know what yeah. I mean? That's yes, the, confused, the clumsy, to do it. Yeah. and stupid. That's yeah. what I did, and I feel like I can't imagine if somebody was like a pro, like going right. into right. it. Like, oh my God, this yeah. is a nightmare. By the way, I like sex, but I just, I'm now in this mood where I'm like, I want to find love again. I'm just a fucking hot mess. But I, so I have my regulars I have sex with. So you're a little, you're a little cracked from your breakup. You're a little tender. Well, I broke up with my boyfriend, and then we got back together, and we broke up again. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, now I'm just. In this mode, but it was all like, distance that was the problem. Yes, I love a red flag. What's yeah. of course, I, I if it's a red flag, I'm there for it. Yeah, but it's I've been writing jokes about it, dating people who are foreign. That's always yeah. fun because there's a lot of build up to like you know when you're not with each other, so you have to like really amp up the sex. You can't yes. just be like, I want to fuck you, that gets old after a while. So he's like, Let's do role play, but you know, you can't role play with someone when they're foreign because then they're just the Spanish version of everything. <laughs> so <laughs> it was like, Fine, be a cop, and in the middle of the night, he rolls over and he's like you're under arrest <laughs> <laughs> stick it in <laughs> also I notice when you have sex with someone and they speak another language if they start speaking that language in the middle of sex it sounds like they're being possessed mm -hmm. it's frightening they're just like and you're so sexy I can't I'm like ah! yeah. So I put a little um, holy water in my lube, but uh, <laughs> but no, I don't know. I I think I'm I'm, so, I'm I'm supposed to have like a date this weekend with someone, some gay who's kind of famous. So we'll see how that goes. But I'm really I'm really. I'm Would really it be bored. famous to us? Yes, actually, more oh. to straight people, I think. Oh, write it down. Yeah, I'll never say Susan Boyle. Oh, <laughs> oh wow, lucky. love her. <laughs> I by the way, if anybody is with a famous person, I'm always happy for them. Well, you know. You know um, it's if it, we'll see. I'm not. I'm on that that celeb dating app or whatever. Oh yeah, what is that Raya? called? I've run into zero celebs. Everyone's what? just hairstylist. <laughs> <laughs> it's for hangouts. But it should be a rich hairstylist, right? It should be a rich hairstylist. Ooh. I need my next relationship. I need to date someone who's got money. You know who would? My you God. know who would love that most of all? Fez. Oh, yeah. Fez. How is Fez? My fellow synesthesia yes. man. Yes. Are you kidding? He's playing Santa Claus this year. You and him both have uh, a Christmas something. Christmas, yeah. yeah. Man, yeah. when you put Mariah Christmas, she really, by the way, straight people listening, Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You is currently sitting in the Billboard Hot 100. Not like, like you know, holiday chart. The Billboard Hot 100, yeah. number 18. As it and it will reach number yeah. one this year. Well, I will tell you, it is the only modern classic 
Christmas song. It's yep. the only one that'll stay around. Everything else is from the 40s and 50s. Everybody tries to put out a Christmas album every year. Kelly Clarkson has a very good one, by the way. Just putting that out. Did there. she have a new yeah. song in it, or is she, she covering? She had a couple new songs, but nothing yeah. compares to yeah. The yeah that's the thing. song. You it's really the song itself. It. Mm -hmm. Why is it so good? I don't really understand how I hear it a hundred times I never every get year. Sick of it. I've never been. I've never went like just turn that one off. Right. It's so good. I think you Thank really. <laughs> You have to go back to like uh, the early '60s with the yeah. with, with what Phil did. Um, last last year was my daughter's first Christmas. Yeah, and I think it was in November, and like I don't know, we were like in a store, and it was they just like Christmas music starting playing, mm -hmm. and that was on as we walked into the store and i was like this is your first christmas song that's perfect Brian, yes. this is your first christmas song that you've yeah. ever heard she's really cornered like, yeah. the market of christmas I yeah know. she owns it christmas songs i hate i don't like rocking around the christmas tree mm -hmm. i don't like elvis's i have a blue christmas without mm -hmm. you um and i i trying to think, those are the ones that i hear that i'm like ah I don't. I'm no fan of Santa Claus is coming to town. The rock and roll version of yeah. that. The yeah, Bruce I don't like Cross. it. That's the worst but, one. But um, uh, I love uh, it's Christmas, baby, please come home. And I'm still a, a wop. That's my life. Yeah. Now this show that you do, do you have an opening act? Do you nope, just, just come me. out and do it? Yeah. Me and Henry Kapersky. I walk <laughs> out and I start singing. And then it's just improv jokes, chatting in between. That's yeah. great. That's so much fun. Do you have any friends stopping by for the night, or it just uh, this is just work for you? Um, wait, on that night? Yeah, the the people you know coming by to see the show. I think or... I have like three people yeah. coming by. Four people. Val is going to yeah. bring some gays from oh, the cellar, that's and then nice. I think my friend Charlotte. That's yeah. it. Because I'm going to go see Mariah with my friend Charlotte the year before or the night before. She's wow. doing her concert here, um, which will be. Okay, and uh, but it's a tradition. We keep getting closer every single year. La two years ago, I brought Evan Williams, a great comic, and um, he wasn't ex he didn't know what to expect. You walk, it was very gay, and he's a recovering coke addict. This comes into play, and uh, he walked and he's like, "What's going on, man?" I'm like, "It's fine, just deal with it. It's all gays." And we were in the fourth row, and uh, that's the one R. Kelly came and performed at, which I was like, "Is this a blue man group? Like, am I gonna have to like put plastic? Is gonna piss on me?" Um, but the gays next to us were doing coke. Which I thought was so funny because it's so inappropriate to do coke at any Mariah concert, <laughs> but a Christmas concert, she was literally like Christmas time, and they're. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be great if Evan relapsed because of that right. and had to go back to AA. And like, what happened, just, Evan? Just the uh, gaze. I think a white Christmas is a sweet thing to do. I think it's really, really nice. May your day. I think I do a bit good Bing Crosby. May your days be merry and bright. Well, you nailed Perfect. that, dude. But I don't Seriously. beat my kids. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jennifer in Indiana. Hey, Jennifer. Hi. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Hey. I teach grade, and you are my saving grace on my drive home every day. <laughs> oh, that's very nice. <laughs> um, I think that Mateo should definitely consider doing a duet with Randy Rainbow. Sure. Yeah. Do it. Who? Yeah. Do you know anybody know Randy Rainbow? Know Randy Who's Randy Rainbow? You don't know who Randy Rainbow? Oh, Randy is? Rainbow! I know Randy. I I don't know him, know him, but yes, I know he makes he's he's uh he makes funny videos on um he like makes these inter like fake fake interviews uh, with politicians and stuff. I had never Instagram. heard of him no, before. Me either. He's funny. He's really yeah. funny. He's you know got a big. He's like all this is fake, but he makes it look like. Yeah. Does he sing? I didn't yeah. know he sang. Maybe that's a thing when um. Like a straight person, it's just like, oh, you would love my friend. Yeah. Gay's gay. Do you like gays too? I know a gay. I say you bring two gays together. It's like bringing two pit bulls together. You never know how they're gonna respond. They're gonna be best friends or kill each other. Particularly if you're not like trying to set them up, but you're like, you guys would be best friends. Right. You two are exactly alike. And you're like, no, mm, those it's like are two not magnets. the two We're not... gay friends to bring together if they're like identical personality. <clears throat> yes. By the way, Fez work. is texting me begging to know. He says to you, he will promise he won't tell anybody who your hookup is. Yeah, go ahead. You can tell him. Okay. He's going to shit He'll his be face. most he's impressed. He's going to fucking lose. I'm very impressed. All so right. Well, I'm waiting for him to text me. I'll text him. So you he... just said from the world of sports, right? Right. We'll so just I will say tell that. you this. Um, Fez bought paraphernalia of his. He bought, you know. Mm -hmm. Work. Yes. 
So Muy interesante. Yes, very, very inside. Uh, Joe's Pub, only 20 seats I know, next less. year we're going to do like a week run. Yeah. Because we didn't expect it to sell out so quick. It's, it's a fast sellout. Who's yeah. always done a, a week? Didn't somebody always do a week? Sandra Bernhard. Oh, Sandra, Sandra Bernhard. Bernhard. And Cola Scola, Scola it does it there. Exactly. Bridget yeah. Everett does a lot there. Yes. Both incredible uh, performers. Chrissy Cello has done her uh, Chrissy Bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love Chrissy Cello. Yeah. Sandra Bernhard, the public theater. She is, yes. She is. What are the dates of that? December 26th and the 31st. Why are we promoting wow. another person? Wow. <laughs> December plus, 17th, Mateo Lane. She's going after Christmas, which is not the same boo. thing. thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful boo. Thank yeah. you. Um, Lady Trucker's talking uh, a little nutty here. Go ahead, Lady Trucker. Hey. Lady Trucker. Lady yeah. Trucker. Hey. Oh, man. <laughs> My Bluetooth just went out on me. Okay. <laughs> then she's actually talking about the tooth in her front of her head. <laughs> What's are up? You, are you gone? Yep. Yeah. She so, wanted to say Patty LaBelle could plant Mariah Carey in terms of range. but uh, Not in terms of range, but yeah. in terms of vocal pa- stability. Power, so, yeah. Okay, I'll break this down. Mariah yeah. Carey's full range is five octaves, one semitone. So she can reach the last G on the piano, and she can go down to a G2. If anyone knows music, that's what it means, like the second to the piano. Okay, so that's a huge range. Now, Patti LaBelle's highest note, I don't know if she's even, I mean, she may may have touched the F over the high C, yeah. but she usually sticks between C, D, E, that range. She gets really high, but Mariah Carey has a full octave over that. But Mariah Carey's chest voice, in quotations, can get to an A5, which is the A right below the high C. Patti LaBelle, her voice is way more mixed, so she can stretch hers to a high C, which is very impressive for a woman to get her voice up there. In terms of actual vocal range, Mariah has a bigger range. In terms of, I think, stamina, stability, and power, Patti LaBelle wins. Wow. Yeah. I researched this shit. I know, Lady Trucker yeah. thought she was gonna school you, but no, no, this you can't. You, you think it. I turned gay yesterday? No, <laughs> no, we know. Um, by the way, uh, Mateo serves a purpose with the the comedians of his generation, where he's like the straight whisperer. Uh, I see a lot of them ask questions about what gay sex is like. Oh, what, that's all I get. It's interesting. It's constantly. So you just number have to one, explain. Number one, Mike Vecchione. Mike Vecchione is terribly interested in gay sex. Mike Vecchione? Yes. I don't know if he's asked me that much about gay sex. Has he talked to you about gay sex? Well, I heard you you talking one night, and I I saw him all but taking notes. (laughs) 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 Actually, his pen ran out of ink. He was so, like... Chris Chris DiStefano, same way. Chris is very open. You know, that's, like, amazing. You know, first of all, if guys get it, you know, like, you can go talk to another guy. Like, that's great. It's fucking great, you know? It's it's awesome. Um, Yeah, Chris, Giannis, both questioned me about it. I went on their podcast. Um, You know who who, uh, won't ask about it is Joe Mackey. Because he doesn't want anybody to say anything like Joe. Uh, all I have to say about uh, <laughs> is, is Sam Morell's. I, I don't like Sam. He's, he's, uh, I, I'm, I'm the kid, not Sam. That is the best. It's I mean, so that's better what Mackie could do. It's so good. Yeah. Joe Mackey, for some reason, because I do such a good Liza, for some reason, it's the same part of my vocal cord. It's, his Liza's kind of just lower than Joe. But they're almost the same. <laughs> he is like the Liza of comedy. He is. Way. And him, Barbara Cork. I mean, my that's like my wheelhouse. Barbara Corkin, Liza Minnelli, oh, Joe Mackey. Yeah, Barbara. Mm-hmm. First yeah. of all, I want to tell you one thing. You look smart. And I, I, I don't know if I trusted you. I got to go with my gut. I'm out. <laughs> what is that? A bowl of mashed potatoes? I'll go in for seven hundred thousand dollars and represent of your company. What happened to my face? <laughs> my husband's a marinette. <laughs> oh my god. That Mackie's incredible, it's right? Surreal. I know. I've done the Keeping Up with Joe podcast a bunch, and I'll just sit with Joe, and Joe will say something like, oh, Sam sucks. I'm like, never mind. I take it back. Sam's great. <laughs> <laughs> and you go back and listen to it. You actually have like a really hard time figuring out who it is. I think they're so funny. They're not even together, and they're doing the same jokes. And you're like, guys, you know what I mean? <laughs> I know. It's I'm not going to not gonna sit here and listen to you badmouth Mackie when he's not here, Sam. Just stop it. Aww. <laughs> 
I, but Joe's voice, Joe doing Joe's voice kind of hurts my voice. Yeah, so I'm trying that, to be in good yeah. vocal health this month. So right. I'm, I'm not. This is important. I know. I you can't. can't blow this. No. You got to be careful what you eat leading up to it. Is there food? Eating or... not as much. I just have to make sure I'm not getting sick. Wash my yeah. hands. Stay hydrated. That bullshit. <laughs> But you don't have to worry like, oh, I can't have anything with milk or cheese or whatever. That's, I mean, that's if I was like singing opera five nights a week, I'd probably really, I'd regulate like no caffeine, no acid, no acidity, no dairy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I'm in a good enough vocal health. I can have like cream in my coffee. You know, I, I swear to God, even with just doing radio, you can't drink a Coke. Your no. voice is so fucked up the after voice, a Coke. Yeah. yeah. I am fortunate enough to go through years and years of training, so I breathe from everything I'm doing, yeah. I do correctly in terms of how I talk, breathe, perform, like all that. Like even on stage, very rarely does my voice get tired after stage. The only time my voice gets tired is if I'm not sleeping enough. Because that's a huge thing. If you're not sleeping enough, that's the number one thing that will fuck up your voice is, is not getting enough sleep. Mm -hmm. Because they're really yeah. delicate muscles. And so if you're using them and you're not really trained how to talk for long periods of time, how you breathe, how you do all that stuff, your voice will be the first. That's the first thing that goes when you're not sleeping. So I always tell comics, like, the problem is you're not getting enough sleep. No you know, comics get enough sleep. None. Yeah. Zero. Because here's the thing. Even when you're tired on the road, you're still in a motel room. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're still like, am I hungry or not? I don't know. You know, yeah, you never if you're feel not good. Cooking, first of all, if you're not cooking your own food for an extended period of time and you're not sleeping in your own bed, those two things kill you. Like wear yes. you out, and that's all common. I'm always grub hubbing like a Mediterranean restaurant, just get like chicken kebab and rice, just something like that seems like you could have cooked it. Seem, yeah, <laughs> right. it seems kind of normal. Yeah, and no one still to this day knows how to pull off green room food. I mean, it's shocking. Um, actually, the only place that does is um. On, on the road, the best is Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, the mm -hmm. comedy on state. Best. Because they do room everything the right. They do everything. They have the best reputation of any club in the world. Because they do the best everything. I mean, right. everything. I can't think of one thing that went wrong. Besides, there was a fraternity getting together at the hotel, and I guess this fraternity barks. So all night, it was just bar grown men barking. So it's kind of hard to sleep. I hate fraternities. Yeah. I put fraternities up there as ISIS. I would put them in the same exact <laughs> thing. I mean, ISIS, as ISIS really is a fraternity when you think of it. Well, you I guess know, it's, it's I mean, you same. really have to be dedicated. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Chris? Yes. You get to ask Mateo one voice thing, something that Chris could do for his voice. Do you have issues with your voice? Well, I mean, you have pronunciation problems. Yeah, I, I, and, I have mush mouth. And you blow, you blow up quick. Like, you can't put together two sentences yeah, yeah, like before my, it gives that. Yeah, the if you have to do a read, yeah. it's yeah. gone. Like, the breathing is what I need to know. It's just so they, right. not, not, to not get out of breath when talking for What if you lost 50 pounds? <laughs> I mean, that could help, Ron. Yeah, I mean... Outside definitely. of that, outside of actual uh, do you smoke? exercise... I, By they, the way, that did help Vito. Remember, Vito used to have a lot of issues Terrible. with his voice. And he used to... Like, sometimes he would go to talk and it would be, like, gurgly in there. Yeah. And then he started losing weight and he never has that he anymore. He never has that. And he used to be, like, compensating. Well, so. <laughs> changing your diet, too, yeah. like, it, with, like acid reflux might mm. be something you don't know. But also... So if you're vaping, that's really bad, bad, Why? bad for your because it's not you're smoking, putting something. Mateo. Yes, but you're putting something that's not. All you need in your lungs is air. If okay. you're putting anything else in your lungs, anything else, you're gonna affect the way they work, and so you're fucking up how you breathe. Your breathing patterns are probably way off. I would think so. I was a heavy but smoker. But here's the thing about him: when he his vape flavor is lung, so it should <laughs> it should help. He thinks it's repairing all the time. Yeah. He's like, taste this. It's just like lung. It's great. I want it all the time. I do vape. I vape a lot. I vape more than I smoked. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, because I can 100%. vape in. I can vape indoors. He used to go outside for maybe. I he think would a, year, a couple a years ago, we had a cigarette together outside. Yeah, probably. Because every blue moon, I have a cigarette. It's like my version of a cigar. Right. Here's the thing, though. I do. I don't see him outside anymore. I miss. I know. Seeing I know. He's outside now. all the time. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm just vaping indoors. Yeah. And I don't Not smoke anymore, and I'm still I still hang out outside. Yeah, but I still he... have fresh air. 
I know. He he likes his snacks after the show. I noticed that <laughs> yeah. when he came it's back. Snack? Yeah. He had all these. What'd you have? You had some Reese's Skittles, peanut butter cups, peanut right? Yeah. Reese's peanut butter cups yeah. is my favorite candy. Skittles it's, too. First of all, it's the Earth's favorite candy. There's no candy that's ever even come close to that. Teresa's. I'm, yeah, and I'm looking yeah. at you, fucking Switzerland, with all your bullshit talk about how good your chocolate is. <laughs> Our chocolate is 94 percent sugar. It's the shit. Well, it, you know what it is about Reese's. If you get a good one, you can't get an old one, yeah. right? You can't get one that's like or. Kind right. of like the, like te- the peanut butter dry. starts to dry out. You yeah. want one that's like the outside is crunch like harder, right? Exit. The chocolate, and then 100%. the inside is really soft, yeah. and it's a little colder than room temperature because you don't want it to melt right away. And you yeah. take that first bite, and it's like heaven. I mean, yeah. it is the best. Where do you keep it in the fridge? No, or? I like to keep it. If I, I'll maybe I'll put it in the fridge. For like if I really wanted to go for it, I'd yeah. put it in the fridge for five minutes, then take it out and eat it. Where do you put your Reese's fridge? Fridge, not freezer. Some people freeze it. Oh, no, yeah. freezer. no, I meant freezer, freezer, freezer. You don't freezer. Know what a, yeah, you don't know what a fridge is then. <laughs> freezer. I don't put that in room temp. Room temp. Yeah, but I would prefer them cooler than right. actual room temperature, mm-hmm. but I feel like fridge is too cold. Now the chocolate gets too hard. Too. But why don't you put it in the fridge, take it out? I think that that's probably a good Let thing. it sit in the sun for a couple it minutes. It reminds me of like what <laughs> we found <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of what we found out about um, red wine. Remember we we're talking about like that actually yeah. red wine is not supposed to be consumed at room temperature. It's just what we have, but it was supposed to be like what a cellar is, which yeah. is actually yes. colder. colder. So it's not supposed Slightly to be cool. I'm in sure the, the fridge, Italians obviously. Know. What about a peanut butter cup cellar where you just have a cellar <laughs> and you just store your peanut butter at. cups there? <laughs> so sharks. Yeah. And then you All right, I want to talk about this product. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, <Yeah. laughs> I um I don't know. I think my favorite candy is number one has to be Reese's. You know, I also really go for like sweet tarts, sprees, nerds. Um, you like the tart ones. I love tart ones. Oh, if it's good, Sour Patch. Uh, my mouth is watering now. Sour Patch Kids. The interesting things about those candies, that taste doesn't exist anywhere else. No. Outside of that candy. Nope. You know, you can't have fruit or vegetable that takes you there. Right. You're disagreeing. No, I, oh. no, I'm saying I was sort of thinking about my own favorite. Like, I love a Reese's, but to me, Kit Kat reigns supreme. See, Kit Kats to me are like, I give it like a six out of ten. No. Oh, my God. To me, it's perfection. I never crave it. I used to love peanut butter Twix. Yeah. Those were great. That sounds like too much Ray to me. No, it's it's... Peanut butter is just a great flavor to add to chocolate. And then, you know, my cousins in Italy don't get it. They don't. No, no one in Europe likes peanut butter. Yeah, they had, yeah. They the weren't fuck? raised on it the way we were. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they had give Nutella. Us a little bit the right. moment you were born. Put a little peanut butter that was on really your tongue and the see if they're happy. The food pyramid is just like the bottom was really peanut butter. Like like yes. that cool, like for kids. Well, the food pyramid was like eat pastas and breads and this. Yeah, and yeah. that's totally gone now. I know. Well, the pasta bottom... is good for well, uh, carbs. Are good. people need to eat carbs? That's the one biggest mistake people make on diets. Like no more carbs. I'm like. That's like brain food. You have to have yeah. carbs, but yeah. just watch what kind of carbs you're having. If you're just eating buttered noodles every night, well, okay, well, that's not good. Right. Yeah, good look, cut. they have dairy well, like, in there. I also just think garbage bread. Like, if you're going to eat bread, like, Fantastic have something. Bread. Bread. Like, we sound like New Yorkers, yeah. though. You Get know what the I mean? good like, bread. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I literally, I was saying this because when I go to Philly, I think that's the best bread in the country. I'm like, this is why people in Seattle can lose weight and people. I right. feel can't. They don't have the good bread out there. <laughs> uh, Vito, what's the best candy in the whole world? Uh, I like uh, I like a Hershey's bar with almonds in it. Boo! Interesting. That's very traditional. Almonds need to mind their own goddamn business. <laughs> I love First of almonds. all, when I'm on a plane and they give you those mixed nuts, <laughs> Delta One, <laughs> uh, you know, I hate the almond. They give you too many almonds. I'm like, more cashews and walnuts. I know. These, oh, and I like almond milk, but the almonds... The, they're a little dull. That's enough of them. I love I almonds. I love peppered and seasoned almonds. Any kind of almond. Can I tell really? you something? And I get called faggot. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's not fair. But the cashew is so far above an almond, it's not even close. The cashew yeah, is the greatest cashews. of all nuts. Yeah, well, cashews, I love walnuts. I love um, macadamia nuts. Mm. I love peanuts. 
I love nuts. People, <laughs> do, people <laughs> treat, are, are treating like fucking peanuts like it's kryptonite, though. You can't get them on a plane. You can't. Well, that's uh, the thing is they're like, you could. it could be a plane of 400 people. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are aware that one of our fl uh, flyers is allergic to peanuts, so please avoid eating anything with peanuts. Meanwhile, someone's brought in a llama, a dinosaur. Right. You know, like, it's just like Methuselah. I'm like, really? I'm like, we can have a fucking duck on the plane, but I can't eat this kind bar? Like, fuck off. Yeah. Right. Juju's I feel like an old man. Is, school is nut free. Every, well, every like, school isn't is. Isn't that crazy? Because it's like I'm. It's not easy when you start think. I mean, well, thank God I didn't like... attend that school. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Good one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> what you is it? You plug it again. Of Chris? course, Mateo Lane's in studio, and the Mateo Mariah Christmas is happening Tuesday, December seventeenth, nine p.m. at Joe's May Pub in New York City. Be merry. Public Theater. What if we all harmonize, yeah. you guys? Was it a, just you and a, a piano player? That's Henry it? Kapersky, Ooh. the fabulous, amazing Henry Kapersky, the most talented man on the face of the goddamn planet. And you, this you, is some you did this with him every year. Or? Yes, you yeah. met him. We yes. do the barber show. Yes. We do the barber yeah. show every single month together, and we always we have a great chemistry. We end up just like chit chatting with each other throughout the show, and he play, even though he's very gay, he plays the straight guy and like deals that's with cute. my my neuroses and. Yeah, he's wonderful. He's great. He's I couldn't. He's the smartest, most talented person I've ever met. And being away from music for a little while, like yeah, I've been less, doesn't matter. You you're able to jump right back into. Oh it. yeah, I'm very. I warm up every day. I oh. sing. I keep my voice in check. Like that's some. And I'm 33 now. <laughs> I'm in my early hundreds to the mm -hmm. gaze. But I, you know, I that's something. This is the age where things start. If I don't keep it up, right, things will just fall. When you're 25. And you have all this youth. I mean, your muscles are just, you wake up and you're ready to sing. Now it's like starting an old car. You got to get it going. So I'm like, instead of doing this every time I do this concert and like struggle to get my voice going, just do it every day. Like Domingo, you know, his voice is still up because he vocalizes every single day. Pavarotti could sing till he died. I was like, yeah, you, I just have to just do it. It's like going yeah. to the gym. 33 uh, is the year we lost Jesus Christ. 33. And he was in the... Great shape. He lived and, old for back then. Yeah, back yeah. then, yes. That's he and was you the think old guy. he would have lived a little longer. I yeah. mean, I love Christopher Hitchens talking about Jesus. He's like, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, really. Like, we're doing human sacrifice to make a point. It seems a little barbaric. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's true, though. That's it for us, Chris. You got four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. Mm -hmm. How are you spending Christmas this year? It's... I'll probably be I own either Brooklyn or Pittsburgh. Are you Italian? Uh, I am. Uh, Irish and Vito, Jewish. Are you doing the? Do you guys do those the seven nights or uh, seven fishes? We don't anymore. We used to. Yeah, we stopped too. Yeah, yeah. we used, we used to, we don't even do Christmas Eve anymore. Now we do Christmas, which yeah. I I hate. Like I loved Christmas yeah, Eve. I, Christmas, I, Christmas is over by Christmas Day. I agree I with you. But Christmas yeah. Day feels like Christmas is over. Well, the Italians do it the day before. Right. So they do the night of the seven fishes, which basically means just any kind of seafood you can ever possibly imagine. Of course, I'm allergic to seafood, so I'm eating coltelletta with the kids. And uh, but we st it's so much work. We're just like, fuck it. We'll all get together on Christmas and just do like a tiny thing on Christmas Eve instead. I, w I was thinking about this. Uh, I mean, Christmas is the Super Bowl of holidays. It's the biggest we have. Yes. Yet it's our least public holiday. Everybody stays in that day. With yeah. family, you know, yeah. well, because there's it, no it, parades, there's no. It, first of all, it's cold, yeah. and secondly, it's not like the same as like it's a religious holiday, so that changes a lot, right? But it's like, Halloween is the real holiday of like expression. People dress up fucking crazy, run out in the streets, go out multiple nights. Like, it's a means of like, look at me. Christmas is more like, all right. We're making homemade pasta, and we're sitting down. We're lighting up a cigarette and bitching about our aunt who we hate. That's, that's, that's probably Christmas why it's the loneliest holiday for people without a family. Like Chris, you used to be drunk the whole time before you had a girlfriend, yes, right? Exactly, you have yeah. no family at all. Yeah, none, none, none whatsoever. So I'd just be home. He drinking. doesn't have a living relative. You don't have any? So who do you spend no. Christmas with? Uh, before, I had my girlfriend. My girlfriend's family now. He gloms on the other people's families. Okay. It's horrible. <laughs> The father's going like this. I was like, Why anyone is he here is here? invited if you want to come to my Nana's house. Oh. There'll be about 60 people this year. Oh, that's, that's nice, nice, though. Yeah. 
there's one room that we, she, my grandma uses her living room once a year for Christmas. It's got bright, bright, bright red carpet, vacuum lines so perfect <laughs> she could win a competition, uh, fruit and candy fake, and a couch that was reupholstered that no one has sat in, uh, with plastic all over the chairs at the dining room table with china that has been used once. Wow. That's Where is so home great. for you? Where is Chicago. It? Chicago. Couldn't tell by this accent. Yeah, you got the <laughs> Chicago accent. Mm -hmm. All right, Chris, one more plug before we go. Mateo Lane, the Mateo Mariah Christmas that's happening Tuesday, December 17th, 9 p.m. at Joe's Pub in New York City, where Mateo will be singing Mariah Carey's Christmas album live. There's only a few oh, tickets left. Oh, Christmas is you. You're supposed to talk while I'm singing. Go over. to yes. publictheater.org oh, yeah. for tickets. <laughs> And go to MateoLane.com for all of Mateo's dates. And follow Mateo on Instagram and Twitter at Mateo Lane. Thank you. We love you, kid. Love we'll you see too. you Thanks back in here tomorrow. You guys.